This is DDALEB20 Old Scores and the Last Adventure in the Oracle of War. You've mm, defeated the Lord of Blades. Nice. You've liberated the Creation Forge used to craft his Warforged army. You are marching home with the allied armies of the Five Nations and heading towards salvation as champions. You are in possession of the Oracle of War, and over the course of the campaign, you've learned that this Oracle of War draws power from the Lamanian Triune, which is a trio of genies that are imprisoned inside of it. These genies recently have manifested outside their prison, offering aid to you in your quests. They even sent you back in time to steal an arcane codex that can finally dis destroy their prison. A couple of you have magic items that are tracking the inbound great power. Uh, these Nolzor's Marvelous Pigments that Ivan carries, for example. There's a magic carving on the lid that's tracking the arrival of a visitor from Argo Nesson. Uh, the speed it's closing on you, you think you have three days before that visitor arrives. You know a little bit about what might be coming. You know about a thing called the Chamber. It's a cabal of dragons that have monitored Corvair for thousands of years, treating humanoids like yourselves as pawns in an ancient game. These dragons are powerful, they're intelligent, but they're loosely organized, and they're prone to the same weaknesses as other mortals, being greed and pride and envy. So that sets the stage as you come to this point in the campaign. You bid farewell to Aaron de Kenneth, who was staying to work on the forges. And he, yeah, he's remaining at the LifeSpark Forge or Foundry as the supervisor for its repairs. Returning to Salvation, you see a grand celebration welcomes you. The midday heat ripples through Salvation. The outpost has been done up for the celebration. Chemical string lights hang between buildings and faded Five Nation pennants flutter from rooftops. The population has swelled with strangers come to welcome the armies back from war. Journalists from the big cities, mercenaries looking for new employers, and crafters hoping to make a quick crown selling commemorative busts and tankards. As the first column of soldiers emerges from the gray, cheers rise from the outpost and folks spill out into the streets to welcome you all home. All right, what do they see coming up? Alaron gives a quick description of your guy. Uh, Alaron, human, cleric of Dolara, uh, of, the, of the family de Denis. He's got his uh, mark uh, on his hand. Uh, cleric sorcerer, uh, not the healer. That would be Ivan, but he has picked up some, some pretty big healing spells, you know, recently. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and his, he, he likes his winged boots. I think that's, that's the latest thing he got, and he, he really enjoys those being able to fly around like everybody else. Next, we'll do Ivan. Uh, Ivan Van Ivanson, the sorcerer cleric, the actual healer of the group. <laughs> um, to even pick up the healer feat last time, uh, no character changes this time, but he did pick up that uh, scarab of protection, and it's uh, just kind of like a little um, like pennant on the top of his helmet that Cass kind of had to weld in this place. I don't think I what did you have pick inspiring up inspiring leader? So do, yeah. Twenty-five tempies. Everyone, Alaron, what, what did I pick, what up, did you for pick what? up? Yeah, what did I pick up for what? Uh, the last adventure, nothing, nothing, no, just the gold, yeah, 3,000 gold. Okay, okay, that's Ivan. Uh, Marathol, uh, Marathol is uh, is a house of uh, the Ronnie agent, uh, rumored to be uh, an assassin, but uh, most house the Ronnie agents are rumored to be assassins. Uh, she uses a double bladed scimitar, she is a level 20 paladin of uh, vengeance has the big tasty plus five aura and i think gosh oh she picked up the cloak of the monta bank uh last session okay root root is an elf druid who um was a soldier in the last war saw some terrible things and is trying to return to nature to heal his himself and uh, do some good in the world so as you traveled out to the Mornland, uh, along your route of travel route you notice some plants starting to grow oh. and where the plants are starting to grow Along your path out of the moorland, it's pushing the gray back a little bit at a time. So the recovery has begun. Root is very excited to see that, since that was his wish. Okay. Uh, your other wishes will come up later. Just let me know when you have one that you want to... I know when yours will happen, Marathal. I know when Cass as well. The army's forward scouts have brought word of your victories to the outpost, and the gathered crowds are bigger than you ever expected. As you march into Salvation, a group of entertainers use stick puppets to reenact your battle against the Warforged Colossus Cairn Slayer. That was the one you blew the legs off and when you went back in time even. Uh, this gives each of you a second hero point. So you can all up your hero points by one. 
The returning armies camp just north of the outpost. The Argonth, the floating fortress, positions itself at the heart of the military camp. The soldiers are all invited to join a grand celebration tonight at the salvage market. The broadsheet reveals that King Boronel is traveling to Salvation to welcome the troops. It also mentions that the elves of Erenal have dispatched an ambassador to cool some rising tensions between Corvair. You might be wary from your long trek home, so you can secure some accommodations either at the Salvation Hotel, which would be like going back home a little bit, or you could, you know, super rich and just sleep in your airship. <laughs> uh, Merthel wants to go back to the Salvation Hotel, see, uh, you know, uh, see, see the folks that she hasn't seen in some time. Very good. I have a map here of Salvation. Uh, not it's a really big map. It might take a while for it to load on your guys' computers. If you zoom out, it's uh, to the east hey, a little bit. Sorry, hey, sorry, sorry. I, uh, oh. Right as I was getting ready to log into Discord, I had a call come in from a client that I had to take. Here is the Salvation Hotel here. So you head there, you have some drinks, you get some rooms. Also arriving at the same time in Salvation with you is Demary. He locates a House Civis agent and magically contacts his superiors in House Kenneth. And House Kenneth offers each of you, while you're having drinks and stuff, a representative from House Kenneth that meets you, and says, in return for saving Demary, we would like to offer you each uh, deed to a small property of your choice, either in Sharn or Fairhaven or Corth. They ask you where you'd most like to live, and they will give you a deed to a small place to live in one of those cities. Demary's there with you, and he says, I've been informed that King Boronel is traveling to Salvation via lightning rail with an entourage of high-ranking heirs from the Dragon Mart houses. I want to meet these guys as soon as I can. I'm going to take my leave. Uh, I'm going to take the next lightning rail to meet them, hopefully in Starleskar, so I can meet them a day and a half, or half a day before they get here. Uh, if you need any aid in the future, you know, besides these homes, please let me know. If you remember, you guys rescued this Kenneth Scion in uh, Back to the Mud. Oh. He was the one being forced to work the Life Forge. Well, yeah, we appreciate the offer. We'll be sure to hit you up okay. if we need anything. You have Jara with you, too. Remember, Jara is the father of Sky Blue. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. rescued him from the same location. So he's hanging out, having some drinks with you guys. And looking around for his daughter, asking people if they've seen him or seen her. Uh, no luck yet unfortunately. But you guys think she might be around. And while you're washing up and getting ready for the festivities that are happening later, and you're in your rooms, safe place to rest, uh, you notice the bag of holding starting to smoke a little bit. Oh, I, I hurry up and dump out the uh, oracle. It trembles as multicolored gases vent from its holes. Then with a sound like sighing, the top of the device Cranks, cranks open, releasing an eerie blue light. What? Three ghostly figures rise from within. Their upper bodies are solid, their lower bodies trailing into mist. These must be the Lamanian Triune. There's a beautiful blue-skinned woman with watery hair, a statuesque red-skinned man with blazing coals for eyes, and a slith-like gray-skinned figure surrounded by swirling gases. They speak all as one and say it's time for you to learn the truth of our imprisonment. Uh, Do you guys settle in to listen to him? Uh, yeah. Heck yeah. That's we cool. are a trio who fell in love long ago, and in a feat unheard of among genies, we brought our magic together to sire an offspring. Our offspring's name is Edon. We raised Edon in the verdant forests of Lamania. The oracle was designed by Sol Ring Morinon, a dwarf, a legendary dwarven artificer. The oracle's creation was a closely guarded secret, known only to an elite group of dragon-marked heirs. When you rescued Sol Ring, from the Mornland. He concealed his membership in the Arum, that's spelled A-U-R-U-M, room, a fraternity of rich power brokers. Moreover, he was chair of their secret shadow cabinet. He wasn't hired to construct the device, as he told you. He was the mastermind behind the Oracle of War project. The Oracle wasn't made to end war. Quite the opposite. Sol Ring hoped to reap enormous profits by loaning its services to the highest bidders, letting them win battles, but taking care never to let them win the war. This artifact draws power from us. Soul Ring imprisoned us inside it. We're held here by a matrix of kyber dragon shards. Soul Ring forced us inside the Oracle, and he kidnapped our child, Edon. We he held in captivity in the Arum's enclave in the Moorholds. If we ever escaped the prison, he told us he would slay Edon. We had almost lost all hope, until things changed significantly at the day of the morning. On that fateful day, which now you've seen in person. A clandestine operation was launched to field test the Oracle of War 
on the battlefields of Sire. On the day of mourning, it was deployed outside the city of Kalazart. The magic of the cataclysm twisted the oracle's power, tapping it into the draconic prophecy to reveal unheard verses. Blind to the approaching doom and worried about being silenced due to the third protocol, the oracle's test team hid the malfunctioning device in a safe house under Fireweave Bazaar, where it remained until it was found by you. We are no experts on the draconic prophecy, but we found we could force the device to reveal unheard verses at the cost of vast amounts of our power. We listened in on your many journeys, but we weren't able to speak to you or to intervene. The only thing we could do was force a prophecy when it seemed fateful to do so. When the Order of the Emerald Claw damaged the Gatekeeper Seal under Metrol, the resulting wave of magical energy damaged the Dragon Shards that were imprisoning us inside the Oracle. And when you brought the Oracle close enough to the Broken Seal that the Matrix was we found we were able to manifest outside the device for short periods of time. Sol Ring knew this might happen. I think we even heard him warn you about it. It's logical to assume he knows we're free, or can get free for periods of time. With you bound up in the prophecy, he's probably being cautious and biding his time, pretending to be your ally. Perhaps he's eager to see what your future holds before playing his hand. Do you have any questions for us, before we have a question or a favor to ask of you? Uh, uh, so Sol Ring's the bad guy. He forced us into this oracle to empower. And he's held our he, offspring this whole time. And you believe he still holds your offspring, even though he no longer has the oracle? And that's where our request to you comes in. And, and forgive me if I should know the answer to this, but I, I'm you know, not a powerful artificer like Cass over here. The, the third protocol is what? The Oracle of War had three protocols, and the right. third protocol was to kill anyone who shared any information about it. Oh, sh the blue skin genie holds out her hand, and water cascades from her palm. In the falling droplets, a ghostly image appears. You see the dwarf, Soul Ring, Moranon. You see his clockwork woodpecker, Yafel, perched on his shoulder. <laughs> Staring out the window, he is staring out the window of a sumptuously decorated lightning rail carriage. An ornate iron flask rests on his lap. She mm. whispers, the genie whispers, her captor approaches, and he brings our child with him. If you're trained in history, make an intelligence history check with advantage for him. Uh, what if you don't know if you're trained? <laughs> you can click it anyway. I'm going to try. Oh, nope, I was not trained. I, I am not. Was. All right. Disregard mine. Is your, is, uh. Is your child? Um, the, how does he have your child captured? Root, how do you do on your history check? We're about to find out here. One of you was trained in history. I've been sharing. I'm not history. trained in history, so hmm. maybe it was Roban. I have another. I'm not. I'm guessing it's not Roban. That seems unlikely. <laughs> With his eight intelligence, nature, trained in uh, nature. What about Ivan? He didn't roll. He he's not, not trained. Oh, I'm not that kind of sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I honestly think maybe we just assumed that I was this entire time, because I sure assumed it. You don't know what train he's on, but it looks similar to the train that you were on when you stopped mm -hmm. the attack on the king. Um, oh, but that was the, oh gosh, the... What, you remember, uh, the Excelsior. That was part of that prophecy. That was part of the prophecy, the, the king in green riding on a bolt of steel. Right. Yeah, and all eyes turned all to turned sky, sky blue, blue or something. Yeah. Right, you recognize the train Ooh. that he's on is similar to the train you were on, maybe like a sister train. Excelsior was the name of that train. There you go. Nice, Josh. The genies <laughs> explain that Edon, their offspring, is trapped inside the stoppered iron flask that Solrain oh. Moranon is carrying. Thought they were going to say the woodpecker. Through the train's window, you recognize the towers of Rote gleaming in the morning sunlight. The excellence, that's the name of the train he's on, is just under two days' travel from Salvation, heading east toward the outpost. Why the genies in unison say, we ask you to intercept the train and steal the iron flask from Sol Ring Moranon. When Edon is safely back in our care, we can escape the Oracle of War and plane shift with him to Lamania. We would like you for you to do this before he arrives in Salvation. He would be unlikely to anticipate such a bold move. And you think about how far away he is right now. If uh, we look at so you guys are right here, the edge of the moorland at Salvation. Uh, Rote is the city here. So there's two days for the train to get from there to Salvation. You have this grand party that you're getting ready for. Uh, you could certainly attend and in the morning, head west and still intercept the train a day out. You, of course, can also leave now if you either way is okay. And, and what do you want us to do with Soul Ring? If you get our offspring to us, it doesn't matter to us. Well, we should probably prevent him from ever being able to do this again. Uh, do you have any other questions? Are you willing to do this for us? And 
Well, where is our trust level at with them? Yeah, no, no, with the uh, with what we're hearing now from the from the triune, the Lamarian, the Manian triune. Uh, La- everyone, make a yeah. wisdom insight check. Okay, I'm not sure if you had pre-rolled those or. You guys have some insane insights. Yeah. Uh, Root <laughs> twenty-five. Holy crap, Root! I uh, will point out that I also got a twenty-five. Oh, so that you- nice. Um, you don't sense anything being held back. I think that I owe a debt to the Lamanian Triune anyways. Promise of the Oracle. I swore an oath to aid the Oracle of War in the near future. And my soul is now bound to the Oracle. So I, I'm definitely... So Cass is going. <laughs> uh, everyone else is going. Uh, so do I'll, you, I'll go with Cass. Yeah. Do you want to go in the morning? Or do you want to go now? I say we go now. I, I don't really have use for fancy parties, and I won't be able to enjoy myself if I know we have to leave in the morning, meaning I can't get so drunk I don't wake up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, is there any, uh, were they going to be doing anything at this party that would be for us, mm. specifically? Well, it's all for you, specifically. <laughs> oh, <the whole> thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I want to go right. to the just, party. Yeah, I kind of feel like we should. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, it would be different if... We wouldn't be able to get there in time if we didn't go to the party, but it sounds like we still would have plenty of time to get there. Tom, is that accurate? Oh yeah, you have plenty of time to get there if you want. Even with delays, we still have a. Do we still have a airship? You do. Yeah, yeah. You do. Uh, One more thing to think about. Ever since you claimed the Nolzor's marvelous pigments, like I said, you've witnessed a dragon symbol slowly passing across the map, carved in the lid of the oh. pigments, heading from Argonesse into Corvair. It's oh, homing in on this position. Jug- judging by its speed of travel, it, it'll be here in three days. So you certainly have time still to go get the king, I mean, get the iron flask and get back. And get back? Yeah, and be the dragons. So now, let's say you get the iron flask, you get back, the genies are freed. How do you plan to handle the threat of the dragons? You can try and ambush them here in Salvation, seek out we- a location... To meet them as they come alone, just you versus them. You're gonna warn the dragon. The, mark, uh, are, you're gonna warn the dragon marked houses or the world leaders. Do we know why they're coming? I don't know that you do. I don't. I, I don't. Yeah, Presumably, I don't. it's for the Oracle of War, though, right? Because yeah. I mean, you know the chamber. It's a cabal of dragons um, monitoring Corvair, specifically monitoring the Draconic prophecies, okay. and this Oracle has been spitting out Draconic prophecies. Right. You had the green dragon. That was um, in New Seer, who was interested in it, but you killed him. You had uh, Narcia of Zandria. We killed her. <laughs> who spied on you for a long time before you killed her. <laughs> so who knows what information she's shared with who. And surely that three between three genies, we could just wish these dragons to, you know, stop learning how to fly over the ocean. You wish, yeah. You wish you could. <laughs> So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, the, so if, if if the dragons are concerned that the dragon prophecies are being spit out willy nilly, mm-hmm. that's their deal. So if we go, we do, we do soul, soul ring. I mean, we recover the flask and prevent him from ever making an oracle of war again. And we we come back, we free the the triune. That would effectively like disable the oracle of war. Yeah. Uh, so then we could just take it to the dragons, show the dragons, this is no longer a problem. We took care of it. You don't have to rain down fire and destruction and all that bullshit. Or, you know, I'm just throwing this out there. We can <laughs> attempt to sell them the Oracle of War Whoa. and then get the H out of there before they realize that it no longer works. They, they, t- t- um, sans the ability to, to like find ourselves in another you know, like in Faerun or something, I don't think that's a great idea. Just change your appearance like I do. I <laughs> don't think that I... Uh, mm. You guys can't do that? No. Well, that's a bridge to cross in a little bit. <laughs> Let right, me get shit. going right, through the party. <clears throat> you guys can yeah. keep thinking about your plans with regard to the dragons and then fill me in when you kind of come up with what you think. So night is falling over salvation. <clears throat> it sparkles like a constellation mirroring the scar- starlit sky above. Passing through the crowded streets, you notice the Chapel of the Silver Flame is being reconstructed into a much larger temple. Workers clamor over the scaffolds, hoisting a large silver torch to the top of the church spire. A gathering of Thranish priests watches from below, chanting somber litanies. Mother Johanna, who is here right from the very start, the priestess here, gazes as the torch is hoisted aloft. Her eyes are moist with tears. So let me grab your guys. Show you. So you leave... Your dwelling place, you come down the street over to here, and then you come down the street. And you're passing by the Silver Flame, which is the building I have you at right now, to the salvage market where the party is going to take place. You see this uh, this happening. 
Uh, Mother Johanna is. Is there anything special you want to do, or you want to proceed on past? She's tearing up. I, what I uh, what troubles you? Her? I say uh. to her. <clears throat> oh, Root. Um, the chapel's being rebuilt. It's just such a beautiful thing. The church has recognized salvation's role as a bulwark against the evils of the moorland. They've sent this symbol here so that salvagers can acquire blessings and potions and holy water before venturing into the gray. In recognition of the power of the silver flame, the torch at the top of the chapel spire shall never be extinguished. She's just filled with awe at the church. While that's <clears throat> happening, you guys notice... Some men come down the street. There's, there's people coming all around you, but you notice know, some that seems suspicious. They come down the street from the north, and they see you, and they kind of make a exit to the west, as if they're definitely don't want to be seen by you. you guys Maybe it's do us from that. another timeline. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you saw them. You got your look at them. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't you from another timeline. In fact, make a wisdom perception check for me, everyone. That 29. Is going to be a, ooh, 29 not is not bad. <laughs> You recognize um, some of these individuals have some blue garb. Uh, they wear an item of blue, either a hood or a glove or a cummerbund belt. These are the same types of garb you saw on the attackers on the Excelsior when they came to assassinate the king. Oh, shit. Swords of these are the Swords of Liberty. Yeah. <laughs> they saw Josh you and they <laughs> hastily retreated to the west down that alley. What do you guys want to do? How can Josh not remember the most basic things about life that most people can? <laughs> Yeah, let's. Uh, I say we we head after them. Okay, you go. Uh, you go rushing after them. You come to the corner. You can put you guys like basically when you can see around the corner. So anywhere oh, up there, Jesus. when you can That's first see around that corner. And um, while you're moving into position, you could. I'll see you guys. Oh, you could bring your Pegasus. Nice. Heck yeah! I mean, it's my regal entrance. Of course. Oh, now I would have my dinosaur stabled. The silver torch flares briefly as it's placed on the spire. Um, as you rush forward, it kind of flickers, and your shadows grow and then shrink back down, just as you peer around the corner. So put your lead guy where you can see around the corner. Should be another more scrap. There you go. Okay, so around the corner, this is the site you see. Lickers, that's weird. The ones with oh. the blue dots are the Swords of Liberty. As soon as you come to where you can see them, are being ambushed by other individuals coming out of this other side alley. So roll initiative for you guys. Any clue who they are? Ever, just as soon as you roll initiative. Uh, Josh, you missed it while you're gone. Everyone's got two hero points. Oh, oh I nice. missed that too. And everyone has 25 tempies if you... <laughs> two spies roll exactly the same. Okay, Marathon, you come around the corner. Uh, the Silver Torch flares briefly... You, as your eyes adjust again, as it goes back down, you see that um, there's two groups here. The ones in blue having been jumped by a second group. The combatants are all hooded, making it difficult to identify who's who, except you know to look for the blue, the Swords of Liberty. Who are the other cats? Like That's what you don't know for sure. Right. So caught in the fading light of the Silver Torch, your shadow flickers wildly over the alley walls, and it's your turn. Uh, how tall are the, is this like building right here? They're all about 15 feet. Uh, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, let's see if we can get people to settle down and figure out what's going on here. Uh, she's going to fly uh, over to here and okay. say, uh, we've got you surrounded. Everyone stand down and uh, let's talk this through. If uh, if justice needs to happen, we'll make sure it happens. And, make a uh, wisdom yeah. insight check, check Marathon. I am. Uh, <laughs> you don't know that. for sure if that's going to take or not yet. Right. And then she uh, she, readies, uh, she readies an attack in case someone uh, uh, gets uh, gets hostile here. Your turn, Root. Um, okay. So, um, you know, you guys have all had these conversations before, so you, in player might not know, but your character knows, the Swords of Liberty is a rebel group against the king, and they tried to kill the king previously, and you stopped it. And this group was coming through Salvations, for some reason, saw you and tried to duck out of the way. And then this other group tried to jump them. We'll this other group is jumping them. And that other group is all hooded, no identifying marks like like the blue that the, uh, the Swords of Liberty have. Oh, Marathil, I'm not sure we even have a horse in this race, but uh, I'll turn the corner and dodge. Dodge and make a wisdom insight check. Okay. Hey, Cash, you taking odds on who wins? This one right here? <laughs> this one right here is going to bolt. He's going to run for it. Uh... Will you uh, bet me if I do? <laughs> I'll give you a two to one odds that the uh, Swords of Liberty, uh, I'll, I'll bet the Swords of Liberty lose. What do you say? <laughs> oh, no, I was betting on that. Now I was going to bet on that too. I think that's a no brainer. All right. So you want to bet that the uh, other ones lose? Cause I could fireball them just as easily. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the sword, the Sons of Liberty have, or Swords of Liberty have attacked us in the past. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know that they're, they're dangerous. So they're I am just fireball them. 
fireball. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fuck. Uh, uh, that is going to be a 31. 31. Incinerated, 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 screaming, yelling, burning in flame, make a couple steps before they fall to the ground. Flames start licking up the buildings. The um, Their leader, who's getting ready to run, makes a deck save. Actually makes it. 31 wow. damage comes down to 15. Maybe uh, we can knock oh, it out. Oh, zero, though. actually. Deck save negates, so he took zero. What else, Cass? Uh, Cass is going to... I don't. I think that's going to be it. Um, going to move down. And tell okay. these two that there's a uh, you know a bunch of uh, crispy uh, bad guys up there, but one of them's still alive. The one by you, Mayor Thill, turns, raises his hand, says, we're with you. We're getting these uh, rebels. That's all. Uh, Sounds good. He doesn't do anything else. The ones closest to the rebels, they are taken aback by the fire that's just erupted in a hellish inferno right in front of them. So I'm going to make them do... Yes. Uh, let's see how brave they are. Wisdom. We use charisma for bravery. So if they get a charisma check of 10 or higher, they're going to go. Yeah, they're both going in. So these two guys move there and there to try and surround this guy. These two back here. We need to, we need to take them captive so we know while they're here. They come to, here. Uh, they all get to there, and once they get there, they're going to, looks like they're doing it to try and knock them out, Marithil, Nice for your guidance. Do sneak attacks with those two hits. So he takes a beating there, pummeling them good. He's almost knocked out. Not quite, though. Uh, then it's his turn. He will click his boots together as if he's wearing boots of speed, Marithil. And after Stay. he clicks his boots together, he is going to grab some loose boards, climb up the disengage action to the roof of this building behind him to not provoke from those guys and unfortunately he doesn't get very far even with his boots of speed as soon as he hits the top of the roof he starts moving quick but having to have to climb out of there he doesn't get too far so he's on top of the roof of this building here running for it ivan was muted uh i will go fly upward Lee's. Uh, how tall don't is the building him. that he's on don't About kill 15 him feet. i'm not gonna kill him i'm just gonna talk to him. 15 feet, uh, <laughs> 15 feet? Yeah. okay uh we'll go uh up 15 and over 10 to kind of get on there so that's three uh four five and i will use my did i drop my wand of binding or the other one Let's see I dropped the wand. I will menacingly uh Grr at him. Grr at him. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong campaign. Wrong campaign, but uh I'll, I'll dash to get in his way. Okay, Alaron. All right. I will fly up with my winged boots till I can see him and we will oh, attempt nice. to grab him. Big Big beast hand. Oh is that twenty five he's gotta beat? Uh yes. No, it's not. Okay. You All grasp right. in the biggie beast hand. You have captured the leader of the Swords of Liberty. The turn and... S well, they, they climb up so they can see. And the one that's there talking to you, Marathol, he says, We are with the King's Dark Lanterns. We've been oh. monitoring the Swords of Liberty for some time. We tailed them here to salvation after receiving intel that they were plotting an attack. Your service here will be commensurate toward your introduction to the King. We would like <clears> to question this uh, one you've captured, if that's okay. Uh, do you mind if we talk to him first? Um, we kind of have a party to get to. Sure. Can we listen in? Sure. All right. Go for it. Right, so this so we'll, sort of uh, liberty guy, um, <clears throat> yeah, he's he's pummeled up really good. You got him in a magical hand, crushing him to the inch of his, you know, being able to breathe. He's gasping for air. You fly up there with a Pegasus, a light next to him. He looks just ready to say whatever if you let go and unsqueeze a little bit so he can talk. Seems like you're having a bad day. Yes, yes, I am. I'm not. I'm not the leader of this though. I'm just following orders. Well, why don't you tell us about the leader and what the orders are? Uh, we're Please. to attack um, we're to attack the king tomorrow night, somewhere east of Starlesker, while the king travels to Salvation aboard uh, the Royal Lightning Rail. Excellence. We don't, have, we don't have, know when that's going to happen, but our mission is to poison him if he survives the attack. Didn't work out for you so well the last time we tried to do the train thing. Uh, blow it up? Is that the plan? Or uh, All I know is that our superiors recruited the Disruptors, an elite clan of harpy sorcerers, to assist in the train strike. Wow. And we have a man on the inside. All agents involved in the operation have a passphrase. I can tell it to you if you let me go. Well, we'll tell it to you and not kill you. That's good. That's good. Um, it's good night. It's um, good night for a party, to which the correct response is, depends who ends up on the floor. Good night for a party, depends who ends up on the floor. Are you the only agents here in town? Uh, yeah, that I know of. Just, uh... You're able to uh, recover some poison crossbow bolts from his quiver, each oh. swaddled in a preservative wraps and coated in purple worm poison. You're familiar with that. Oh, yeah. Before certain laws were passed, adventurers were able to use that. <laughs> yeah, and that's all you get out of those guys. And you can throw them in the brig. Well, we let him go like we promised to the uh, Dark Lanterns. 
Oh yeah, they take him. They take him. Yeah, yeah, let him. They didn't make any problems about not killing anyone. Good work, boys. (laughs) Now, before you leave here, you notice on the roof of a building over to the west. It's the old uh, armory building over here. Is silhouetted against the uh, night sky a single individual, and you see a small bird perched at their side. oh, Oh. Let's go talk to Sky. When you arrive, you all head on over there and fly and land on the building. You see Sky gazing up at the Ring of Sybaris, band of glittering light that stretches across the heavens. <clears throat> Sky turns and looks at you. Oh, she has many questions about what befell you while you were in uh, in the Moorland. And she tells you, I was just thinking about Flame Wind. She kidnapped me because she was so sure she was right. So damn sure that prophecy of yours had had me at its heart. But she got it all wrong. Guess she couldn't but, handle that, being immortal and all. By the way, we did not kill Flame Wind. Uh, Shane did non-lethal damage and knocked him out. Her, her out. Mm-hmm. Just, Funny, because that's that's what I wished for. Well, the thing is, well, I'm mean, happy being nobody. I reckon if half the people in this world happened. just just accepted what they ain't got or what they ain't are, then we'd all be a whole lot happier. Me, I just want my dad back. Maybe it's time to accept hey, that ain't happening. I can grant your wish. He's here. He's looking for you. Where have you been? So you guys help old Jara up under the roof? That sure, used I'll give him a ride. That you, Sky? Sure grown some, he says. As uh, Jara Blue steps Onto the roof with your help. Sky almost tumbles from the rooftop. The old soldier winks at Earl, the uh, seagull. Kept her safe for me, old friend. Earl shrugs his feathery shoulders. Turns out the girl can look after herself, he says. And you all gain a hero point. Yay. So you're up to three, probably. Yay. Was that really your wish, Shane? Yeah, after after she was bound to her. Something uh, stirs in the shadows. Something comes up onto the roof with you. Mm-mm. You see the light of the city lights, uh, the torch lights of the city gleaming in the creature's eyes. As it slinks into sight, a lion's body, black with orange-striped fur, with the head of a female elf, her face covered in swirling tattoos. Sphinx flame, be still, she whispers. Do you remember the first verse you learned in the Mornland? When dark lanterns flicker in the light of the silver torch, the king in green rides north on a bolt of steel. Two nations prepare for war. All eyes turn to sky blue. I kidnapped Sky because I wanted to control the Oracle of War and guide the nations of the world via the draconic prophecy. I refused to believe I'd misinterpreted Sky's role in the prophecy. I was confident the verse referred to her, but it seemed I was wrong. When you refused to hand over the Oracle, I learned the hard way it wasn't my destiny. Now I know I've misinterpreted the verse. The king in green wasn't King Boronel's brother. It's a dragon of the chamber, come to recover the Oracle of War with a flight of dragons. The nations turning to war weren't Breland and Thrain. They were Corvair. My role in the Draconic Prophecy is over, but you must be ready for what's coming. The fate of the world appears to be at stake. The Sphinx takes to the air, flies away into the... Is, uh, Br- uh, is it, she said it was Breland and Aranol that were going to war with each other? Correct. Uh, or Corvair and Aranol. So the whole oh, continents. Oh, uh, continents. Yeah. And Aranol is the uh, undead, Elven. undying elf. Yeah. So you had heard that uh, tensions are high. In fact, you pull out the broadsheet that you guys had uh, found when you came to the city. Didn't really find much interest in reading it. But now you take a look at it. And here's what that looks like. It talks about your return. Um, talks about King Boronel announcing his uh, that he's traveling to the Moorland, scavenging up of salvation. Welcome back the troops. That the relations between the Five Nations and the Elven Nation of Arenal have hit rock bottom following the recent terror attacks. If you recall, when you were at the dining hall and all the elves attacked you, that was like worldwide that happened. So he's having to deal with that. The king is having to deal with that. That is the two nations of the Brink. Her awe kind of goes away and her slack-jawed uh, mouth returns to normal. She says, I don't think the Draconic Prophecy is prophecy is done with me after all she looks troubled but she says i'll help you however i can i mean if all eyes are still on me i'll do what it takes the only thing is i, I don't want to have to go to the dragons you can go to the dragons well i'll go to the dragons for you <laughs> and so she offers her help so when you return to salvation if you do after seeing the king she'll be around to help you in whatever way she can all right you go to your party you live it up you're treated like heroes you're bought drink after drink after drink in the morning you can get your stuff together hop on your airship and head west to intercept the king and when you get there warn him there's an assassination attempt get the iron flask from soul ring who's on the same okay Anything else before you go? Intercepting the train. 
So the train's moving east along the lightning rail from Rote to Salvation. It's not stopping at every town as a rural service, so it's probably going to be only stopping at the larger settlements. You could intercept it anywhere along the line, sneak in if you want. You could teleport in if you want. The best city to intercept it is probably um, Starlisker, I think it's called. Yeah, your best city where it's for sure going to stop will be Starlisker right before it gets to the moorland. So you could get on board it there if you wanted to. You're going to need boarding passes to get on board, unless you just talk your way on, which you very well might be able to, given you guys' skills. Is it a... Uh, would you all want to... Uh, we could go, like, find those agents, you know, and get one of them to come with us or something. And I say we try to get to the king, get the king to safety, and then confront Sol Ring. I can just look like one of those agents. Well, I mean, but if there's, like, a passcode or, I mean, you know, like, you know, actual knowledge of their relationship with the king. They'll go with you. Dark Lantern will go with you if you choose. Well, why don't we do that? Yeah. Okay. Y'all up for saving yeah. the king and, you know, getting the king off the train if we can, teleporting him away or something. You get to your airship, Dark Lantern with you. You fly west quickly to Starlesker that day. Um, then you wait there for the train to arrive, or you could go even further west and get the train before it gets to the city. I oh. Let's so do that. Time you to just have to be yeah. hopping off your your uh, airship onto a moving train. Ah, oh, that's easy. Which you guys can mostly fly, so it should be okay for you, I think. Mm. So further west? Yeah. Okay. Further west you go. And the train is um, west of Sarlesker a couple hours. One, two, 11 cars long. Engine in the front, probably a galley as the second car, and dining car, and then various um the middle three cars after the first three are probably the first class and then you got steerage and um cargo and stuff like that toward the back so where on the train would you like to ha- land you got engine three first class cars and then the lower classes after that does the so dark have- lantern know where the king would be it should be one of the first class cars i say we go straight there since we have the dark lantern with us yeah let's do okay. it <laughs> all right i didn't even think that i should put all the people trains on the map layer See. And then your crew of your airship, after you get off your airship, what do you tell them to do? You want them to just kind of parallel the train, go to meet you somewhere? Parallel sounds good. You'll think. Okay. I'll stay near the train. Yeah. Then. Close, close enough to rescue us. So you want to come to, here is the first uh, first class, um, and the car to the north of it's probably the dining car. So you can come here, land, uh, and open the door into the first class, basically, if you like. Sounds perfect. Let's do it. All right, in the door of the first class, and you can put you guys coming down the hallway. And there is a guard in the hallway who stops you. And, uh, oh, we're here to save the king. What do you mean, save the king? Well, the Swords of Liberty are going to tempt his life. The Stark Lantern was in salvation with us when we discovered the plan. Uh, we're here to get him off the train, as we don't know exactly what the plan is. So the best bet is to get him out of here. Uh, make a charisma persuasion check with advantage. And 21? Uh, plus three, I think. Uh, with persuasion, isn't that right? Like with the the shadow elf thing, shadow mark. We'll go check. Um, the mark. I thought it was I think the mark is performance. Oh, maybe right. Let's okay. see. So twenty, and it it's rolled there for you automatically in your skill. Oh, sure enough. Okay, so twenty one per- persuasion is enough. The guard says, "Well, come with me then," and he leads down to the next car. Now, when you get to the next car, there is another guard standing out in front of. Uh, this door here is a warforged you recognize. It is Three, who is the king's personal bodyguard. The guard comes here, tells Three that you're here to see the king, and he steps back, and this guard gets out of your way, and he uh, opens the door. And when he opens the door, you hear the conversation going on. Madness! The king roars as he slams his fist on the on a table. Your people caused the deaths of hundreds of my subjects, practically ground my country to a halt. And what? You aren't even willing to reach into your pockets to apologize? Then you hear a voice that sounds more polite and elvish. As I said, your grace, this was a rogue operation. All involved are now dead. Arinal sees no need to escalate matters further, nor cause further bloodletting. To that, the king doesn't appreciate that. Bloodletting? Are you threatening me with war, boy? Um, the king notices the bodyguard, who steps back, and you guys can now talk to the king. And the king is in his personal chamber talking to this elf he turns and looks at you he says the champions what are you doing here we're here to save you your life is in jeopardy again what do you mean by that (laughs) yeah these these sons of liberty or or, anyway us and these uh dark lanterns found a found a plot to kill you in salvation and looking into it uh they're planning to attack you on the train uh the the plot in salvation was just a backup in case the plot here failed you have we don't know what it is to blow it up or whatever yeah Yeah, you got your dark lantern guy too he says yes uh your excellency this is true 
they had planned, or at least we believe, right after you depart from Starlasker is when the attack will happen. <clears throat> the king looks uh, like he's taking you guys seriously, and he asks the elf to excuse himself back to his quarters. The elf goes back to his quarters. The king invites you into the chamber. He's there with his two uh, tigers, his two white furred um, oh. mage-bred tigers. And he says, well, if what you're saying is true... I should get off at Starlasker. How did you get here? Well, that's you could you could ride my Pegasus up to the uh, up to our airship and take the airship directly to Salvation. That might be the best route. If there's going to be an attack on a royal train, I want it stopped. We'll do our best. I would greatly appreciate that. You have always come through on every occasion. That's true. When we land or when we get to Starlasker, I can have a body double come upon the train, a changeling. Oh. Or I could just do it. Oh, well. <laughs> or you could do it. If you I like. mean, yeah. why, why bother some amateur when you have a professional right here? And uh, then I turn into the king. Yes, he's impressed. What parts of the train have you been on? Who's seen you here? No one but you and the guard outside. Okay, and he, three. Goes, he, he goes out to the three. Oh, and three, right. That, he opens the, the door to three. He says, left. three, make sure every guard that's seen them stays with you. And three says, okay. Okay, so no one knows you came here except the elf and the guards. We'll keep the elf under watch. I can go to your airship and stay out of the way while the attack happens. It will come after you, though. You who look like me. And it might not be pretty. For them, it won't be. <laughs> okay. Um, do you guys have any questions for the king before he leaves? Is there anything that um, we can do to help with the uh, undying court? He uh, says, well, just uh, we'll have to continue the negotiations after the celebration for sure. Uh, well, and then so I'm going to just whisper to everyone. Do we have raries? Though? Do we, is that a thing that we do? I don't think uh -huh. you guys do Harry's now. Uh, uh, well, I mean, first of all, you got to plan things. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, so if you never plan things, you never need a Harry's. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell them about the dragons. That's, oh, that's something a king should okay. know. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. So, I will get all the armies ready. The Argonth will be ready. We'll be there to defend you and yeah. fight against them with you. But 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 first, let us see if we can send them away without, without bloodshed. Of course, we don't want bloodshed. Not with dragons. Not with the chamber. Right, and yeah, we, we don't yeah. want a war with the Undying Court while the while the dragons are en route. No. Remind me, do the Undying Court are they? Uh, do they have enmity against the dragons? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm? I don't think they specifically have any en en enmity. Oh. If you have no other questions, he'll leave. He'll be on your yeah. airship. You guys will continue toward Salvation. Get attacked. Arch Defeat the attackers, Actually, and then get up. You want your airship to stick around, or you want your airship to take him there, and then come back and get you? Uh, have the airship take him there, and then come back and get us, is what okay. I say. And then I, I'll go solve this crisis with the uh, Undying Core while he's gone. <laughs> okay. We should probably take care of Soul Ring, too. That's a good yeah. thing to do, yeah. Oh, I'm just, yeah, I'll just go order him to give it to me. I'm the king. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It worked out great. The king will take your Pegasus up to the airship. The airship will speed off towards salvation three suggests to the king that he should go with him the king says that might signal that i'm not on the train i would suggest you stay <laughs> you got any more of those changelings in your party he says then you better stay three okay so the king heads off now what do you want to do with soul ring uh, i'm serious i i think that we should just go up there and i should just tell him that uh gather some guards tell him he's under arrest and that he has to turn over all of his possessions uh let's see since things are likely to go down uh what do we got we got do we have five people? Four people? Five. Five people. Mm -hmm. we have five people. All right. Uh, then there go my three fourths and my two fifths, and I'll hit everyone with Death Ward. Nice. Now we're sure he's part of some like powerful consortium or something. Yeah. That's what they told us. Yeah. I don't. The, the Orum. He people. might. I mean, he might. Uh, he might tell the king to go stick himself. Hell, he might be part of the Sons of Liberty plot. Well, he, I think he probably is, and uh, uh, we should take him in for interrogation. That's an excellent. Excellent point. Right. No, I, but the, yeah. But the most important thing is getting the flask away from him. I mean, absolutely. Whatever it takes. So, you're just going to start, go start church in the train or? Uh, well, yeah. Why don't you, why don't we have the guards take us to him? Oh, sure. They know where he's at. He's on the next train down. So, you all head toward the next train where there is a guard there and he gets out of your way. And this is the door right here to Soul Ring's room. I can get all the way out. Actually, something's going to happen. Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. We'll use the <laughs> king for Cass, but Cass, where you, where's your actual, <laughs> oh, I see it. I think I see it. <laughs> okay. So Cass, I'll put you by this red arrow right here. Key? And uh, as the king, oh, I'm going to put you by the red arrow by the king's room. Alderaan, I'm going to move uh, you down to the king's room. And... Tom, would, would it be helpful if I emailed you some pictures? No. 
It would not. <laughs> Failed uh, threat. Root, I bet one. I could find some good pictures of kings. All right. So the king is heading on down. Uh, this guard is going to take you. Three's there. Um, put you guys where you want to be. And the elf has gone to his room. That's the one by the kings. Stay shut. So put you guys all where you want to be as you're walking towards Soul Ring's room. So Cass is this. Hmm? Yeah, that's, that's Cass. the guard that's leading. It's the guard that's leading you. Hey, Mr. Uh, king Pants, why don't you back up just a little bit? I can't control my... Oh, oh I'm sure you can't. Uh, <laughs> here, you can just use Cass. <laughs> Root, how about, how about you be closer, Root, so you can, like, wild shape and do things? Okay. So you should probably... <laughs> All of a sudden, you hear loud thumps from the roof above, at, like Uh-oh. as of people landing on the on the roof above, followed by the sound of running feet heading for the helm to the north on the train. All around, passengers look to the ceiling in surprise. Intruders on the roof, cries a knight, as the ear-splitting sound of the train's alarm rings through the carriages. Seems the ambush, the assassination attempt, has come early. Um, make a wisdom perception check, everyone, please. 24. 24. You spot an airship um, similar to your own. The name painted on its prow, the Red Worm, uh, swoop back up into the clouds. So that airship must have dropped people off on the roof of the train. And they are running towards the helm of the train right now. And you also, at the same time, so you hear that. The door to the north opens up. And a guard comes through. And he says, um, my liege, my helm can spirit us to safety. Take my hand. And this is this guard right here. And you recognize him. A dashing knight wearing a polished silver helmet holds his hand out to King Boronel. This is Cicero Irmagrius, the knight that you guys rescued when you went back in time. He was about to what? die in the Moorland, and you allowed him to teleport away to safety. <laughs> What's up, Cicero? Uh, that's not necessary, but thank you. Right. Uh, let's roll initiative, everyone. And we're not really quite yet in combat, so I'm just going to actually have you guys tell me what you're doing, and we might skip several rounds ahead. Um, so, Root, you hear the running feet on the roof heading toward the front of the train. What do you want to do? You have Cicero here telling the king to come with him. He can teleport him to safety. You're muted if you're talking, Dave. And I got to find the button. Yeah, I'm going to let you... <laughs> You guys handle that. I'm going to open a window, turn into an air elemental, fly out, and see what's going on on the roof of the train. Nice. So Oof. on the roof of the train are a whole bunch of, looks like, raiders. Uh, they've landed, coincidentally, on the top of your train, Ooh. and they're running to the north. And yes. flying cover above them are uh, harpies. See some harpies up in the air. Oh, that's uh, a special They're not, spot. like, right by them. They're ahead of them. Having landed on your train, or you see them landing on your train, and kicking the door in are these uh, elven agents, it appears. Motherfucker. Yeah. Add them to the initiative. Going on 10. Okay. And then we got various people running. They're in two groups. Blue dotted ones. But there's no difference between them. That's just for initiative. Sort all this. Okay. <clears throat> So, just as you're going out the window, real quick, I'm going to handle something that comes next. The door to the south opens up. This assassin comes through. You, when he gets to hear Marithil, you can hear in your mind cacophony of screeches and screams. He closes to there, and then he uses a bonus action to cause that static in your mind to, like, explode. You take 21 psychic damage, Uh DC 16 wisdom save halves it. And this knight by you also gets wisdom save. Fails. He'll use his indomitable trigon. <clears throat> and the knight makes, you are. It takes 10. So can... <clears throat> okay. That assassin gets there, and then uses a scimitar on the knight three times. Oh, shit. So hits him twice for 19 damage. Okay, that was the first assassin through. Uh, none of the knights react as fast as you guys do. They'll be out this one round. Uh, the raiders are running north. Root, you come out the window, turn into elemental form. You got raiders kind of split between two cars now, running to the north. You got cover uh, by the northern raiders of two of these harpies. And they're yeah. flying overhead. They're not like on the ground. So they're maybe 40 or so feet up, but they're going with those guys. That's what you see. Do the uh, Does the yeah. elf have any in- insignia on it that would indicate what, you know, if they're associated with anyone specifically your turn dave looks like you're muted in discord mm, yeah discord looks good but i don't hear you any still right um I'm can still. you hear can you hear me it's lighting i up. can hear josh okay <clears throat> must be my volume is too low now try it, dave all right well i'm gonna go over and uh try and whirlwind a whole bunch of them all right <clears throat> whirlwind their asses straight 13 off. strength saves on those guys uh four of them two three four uh, three of them dodge and one's thrown off the train and gone once they're dodging strength save Half damage, half of 40, and they take 7 each. What else do you want to do after Root? The second set of raiders are running north or turning to fight the air element. So these guys will turn on you. 
and swing their long swords at you. So they're all going to gather around you and attack one, two times. Elemental is armor class 15. So hit for 12. That was it. And they're not magic weapons. One okay. hit for 12. And then second round of swings. Uh, looks like one hit for nine. Again, not magic. Okay. That battle's raging up there. They're done. We got the champion that was... Uh, oh, the one that came down to help the king. One. He's going to try and move through your squares if you let him. One, two... Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he dashes up to the king, he holds his hand out. We gotta go. And he's done. I have a new turn. And so far, only that assassin token is in. Those guys still haven't. They haven't in there. Yeah. And all these guys are above us on the train. Correct. All running cool. uh, on the roof. Nice. Am I able to uh, hop out of that window, cast yeah. a spell, and fly back in? Yeah, definitely. So you can do that. I'll do that and I'll. Uh, is the top of the car wood or metal? Uh, a lot metal. of questions here. Metal. Metal? Cool. Yeah. You get the fireball. Fireball, okay. Uh, what level are you casting fireball at? Uh, just three. You'd, okay, the first harpy will just counter it with a third level oh, counter spell. I will subtle counter that. Subtle counter, okay. And your fireball goes off. 31? Uh, 31. All right. Uh, it'll get the elemental too. He was like all in the midst of them. Okay. Um, so 19 deck saves. Only one made it. All the rest Ooh. took 31. And the one that made it was the second to last. So we take 15. Then we had this one wounded dies. This one wounded dies. And these two take you hop back in there, Ivan, if you're done. Next assassin comes in. Uh, the one to the south here moves to there. Hurls some darts at, uh, that knight. Tack and three attacks. Dart one. 17 misses. Dart two. Hits the knight. 14 piercing. And then 39 poison, 19 con save for half. Bails it, last indomitable he'll use. Bails it still, takes 39 poison. Uh, Marathel, your turn. Oh, man. You can trade spots with that knight. He'll let you if you want. Yeah, let's do let's let's do that. You pull uh, him back, you grab his shoulder, throw him back, and step in front of him. Uh, she is going to... Oh, gosh, where'd he go? Might as well. She's going to bonus action. Oh, she had it. I must have got rid of it. Oh, oh well. Uh, yeah, she will attack the uh, the assassin in front of her. See if he is any good. Uh, does an 18 hit? Uh, 18 assassins. Yes, I hit. All right, so 18 uh, for 22. <clears throat> And, oh, how about a 33 for 14? And Got it. What's she doing? Yeah, kind of like that, huh? Uh, she is going to make sure she has it. She's going to, yeah, she'll bonus action shield the face. All right. After Marathel, uh, Harpies are just cybered over there. Assassin's turn coming from the north. So I'll stop there. And then Hurl darts at Aleron. You can feel the mind static to Aleron when he gets within 10 feet of you. First trigger that. 29 Psychic Aleron, 16 Dex Wisdom save for half. All right. Nice. Like and it. darts coming your way. 20 is a miss. Yes. That'll hit. Uh, 9 piercing, 42 poison. 19 con save to have the poison. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Aura? Am I within aura range? 20, 30 feet. 30. 30. 6, you are. All right, what's the aura on that? Plus 5. Uh, five. 15. There's no uh, fancy books in Eberron, apparently. All right. Uh, let's see. Where is... We'll try hero point. 20. All right. Uh, so half is 21. Resistant makes that 10. So a total of 19 damage there. All right. That was a... Uh... See two darts to hit you, and then he closes for a third attack with a scimitar that misses. And then the next assassin. Assassin. He comes to those uh, darts at you. Other one. Cover this time. Do you have cover? Yeah. Uh, I'm still gonna have to shield that. So shield. Shield spell. Free shield. Okay. Yep. All miss. He's done. Then we got champions going. This guy that's getting pummeled. He's done. And then Cass, your turn. First Cass is going to look at the knight and say, no worries, my good loyal man. My new friends have this, and I've got some tricks up my sleeve too. Ha 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 And I'm going to pull out my two little uh, ATSDs from <laughs> seemingly nowhere. Okay. And I am going to shoot uh, this guy with him. So first one. That's a 24 for 13. I didn't see who you're doing. The one south of Marathon? Uh, yes. 24. That's a hit. 13 force. Got it. Second one is a 17 for five. That's a miss. After cast, Aleron. Let's see. I can see all of my friends. Except for the air on that. He's up, up on the roof. Up. Yeah. On the roof. He's somewhere. like actually like right here amidst all these guys. All right. So I can't see him. Oh, uh, is the is the door next to me open? Uh, Negative. That's the door to the elf's room. Yeah, it's currently can, closed. Can I open that as my free action? Uh, let's see. Yeah, he went to. All right, and is he in there? 
he is in there. Uh, one of his guards was kind of peeking at the uh, his guards. One of the servants was peeking at the window, and she jumps back afraid. I'm going to say, if these uh, elves are beholden to you, call them off. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Uh, all right. I'm going to cast a You can make a wisdom level. insight check on that. You saw it, Cass. Uh, yeah, just you, Cass. Uh, go ahead, Alaron. Well, hold on. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hero point that. Okay. <laughs> uh, wait, what is my thirteen insight is what you're right now? Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I am going to hero point that because why not? Or my hero point. I haven't used one of these things in so long. Oh, there it is. All right. So seventeen total. Okay. I uh, still believe him. Uh, I'm going to cast a third level spirit guardian. Wow. Ooh. I haven't used this spell in like. <laughs> Forever. Uh, I'm right. actually sure. I'm not sure I've actually used it in this campaign. What else you got, Alaron? Uh, that'll be it. Okay. We got assassins going. Uh, the ones to the south. This guy there is going to cast Misty Step. I don't think they even use uh, components though. No components. So not a Misty Step into the opening you made there and attack the king. So he's got mind static going. You hear. You hear just a cacophony of uh, static in your mind. Uh, let's see. You still think? Alaron. This is the elf I was talking about. <laughs> he goes, I don't know who that is. And the elf uh, will do the static first. Bad, that hurts. 21 points of psychic damage kills this poor servant girl. Son Kill, of a bitch. Kills the elven ambassador. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe he was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> And then um, it's going to do damage to you, Cass. Uh, 21 Psychic, Wisdom Save for half. Damage this knight by you, Wisdom Save for his. I am going to use, uh, now that we know I have to do this in advance, I'm going to use my Flash of Genius on this. Okay. Uh, you helping that knight no right behind you, Marithel? Giving him a bonus on his saves? Absolutely. Okay, so he saved, took 10. Um, and then Marithel, you'll be in it too. You see the uh, 16 Wisdom Save, 21 damage. You're good, take half, 10. So, oh shit, well... He had an extra special, extra mind blank that he was able to use. So that worked. Then he's going to cut down the king. Scimitar three times. 25. Uh, ooh, do I have a uh, shield? Yes, I do. Shield. He's going to need a crit after that. Uh, 27 misses. Okay, he's done. Then three is going to go. Three is, can't get anyone, so he's going to stay. Uh, raiders are running for it. The ones to the north. They're up to the next train now. Man, King and, Bornell is going to have a lot. Of, like People are going to be like, holy crap, that dude's a badass, and we never even <laughs> knew it. Root, your turn. I don't know what those jokers are doing going to the front of the train. I'm going to try to get the engine, eh? Oh, oh shit, I forgot to do a thing. All right. I'm going to um, disengage with these guys on the roof. Not okay. disengage. They Let's can take away. their opportunity attacks. Okay. Uh, long swords. Need 14s to hit. Got two hits, one for five and one for six. Not magic. Right. Then what do you want to do, Root? I'm going to find 90. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight. That'd be 90. And really, you should be able to keep up with these guys. I mean, they're just, they're running at one third of your speed. So you get up to. Hey, Tom, I messed up. My flash of genius used my reaction, so I could not cast shield. Oh, okay. So I will. So you uh, hit take... twice, it looks like. Okay. Uh, uh, then, yeah, you able to catch up with them, no problem, in your elemental form. What do you want to do when you get there? Uh, see if I can uh, recharge. No. Um, I'm going to turn into root form with my bonus action. Okay. I'm going to do draconic transformation. Oh, oh nice I'm gonna spell. Breathe fourth breath, force breath, breath on those. For some reason, my tongue is not working. Um, your on here. those. Okay. So you are back to human form um, as a bonus. Draconic transformation is also a bonus, though. Which what you want to do something different. Oh, only um, only I, the DM, can do, do bonus actions. Uh, right, it got to be a monk. Or I monks, yeah, three. monks can do that too. Yeah. Um, okay, no, I'm going to use my action. I want to do uh, maybe Firestorm. Okay. So if I don't have a button for that. That's okay. Firestorm it is. He'll cover all of them. Um, Arby's will try to counter it. Uh, so you cast in Firestorm. They know you have to roll to do it. So they'll both try to counter. And that's a DC 17. Check where the checks are. They are Christmas checks. Okay. One, two. Yeah, 17. Wow. 7 and 15. Don't do it. So your spell goes off. So damage on this. Uh, 70, 10 is what I want to think it is. You are correct, sir. 32, 32. points of fire. Probably some pretty high deck saves. Six. None of which were made. All take 32 fire. They were all left very nearly dead. Uh, any hit will kill any of those guys now as they're burned to cinders. But still alive. What else you want to do, Root? I've used all I can. After Root, we got the Raiders B. Uh, actually, the other team over here that you left behind are going to try and catch up with you, running after you. And then Cicero's turn. King shrugged him off, doesn't want to take his helmet teleportation. So Cicero attacks the king with his greatsword. Oh, make a, you. Make a 
perception check. Cass, Not good. and Ivan, and Merith. Nice, Merith. Nice, Ivan. Not okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Here he comes. Uh, uh, we'll attack him with his great sword. Three times on the king. Cass. So Cass is armor class 24 right now. With some uh, tempies. That's a miss. That's a Not miss. Anymore. That's a miss. All three swings oh. miss. Doesn't understand how the king's so good, could it? Uh, you Ivan, you dick. <laughs> <clears throat> we saved your life. How did you know the morning was coming? He says, yells it at, 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 um, I mean, they saved your at life. At Marithil. <laughs> yells that at Marithil. How do you know the morning was coming that day? In, <clears throat> the same way that we're here now. What kind of evil, evil sorcerers are you? Um, Ivan, not that evil. Oh, I'm about to show that motherfucker a little something. Let's do it. <laughs> what are you going to do, Ivan? Oh, it's my turn. Yep. Um, hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, and right after Ivan's turn, we'll take a breath. We'll break. Yeah. We haven't dealt with any of the assassins yet. Uh, all four are still alive. Four. Oh, there's one. Okay. We got quite a few. Um, you know what? Uh, I'll just kind of. Uh, can I? Can I fly over them to land behind them? Uh, like how tall is the room from one of them? But you can otherwise. I'll take it. Okay. He swings his scimitar at you. Twenty nine for eleven. I'll take the eleven, and I will. Cast a fifth level inflict wounds on this. Uh, do, 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 do. It's enough better. Boop. Ooh, let's uh, try to find the button. Let's hero point it first. So at 15 and does favored by the gods do attack rolls. It does. Does a 19 hit. 19 does hit. That's everything I had. And I said fifth level. And it needs two more D10. So four. Wow. 20. A big whopping 20. Okay. <clears throat> Ivan just finished. Y'all done, Ivan? We got an assassin going, the one here to the south. Moves up close to you, Marithel. You hear that uh, mind static as it closes. It triggers that as a bonus, doing 16 points of psychic to you and the knight by you. With some safety, he's 16 to have that. It makes it and takes. Then it attacks you, Marithel. Hit and miss. So hit for seven and crit for 16. Did you catch all that, Shane? He might not be back. Okay, that was that assassin. <laughs> Marithil's turn. Oh, let's do... There it is. Let's do that. Avenging Angel, nice. And... Yeah, I think that's what I can do, unfortunately. That's your action. Okay. After yeah. Marithil turns Avenging Angel, the Harpies oh, are... St- oh, I am going to tell my Pegasus to go block the front train car and literally just don't let anything get past it. Gotcha. To, to get to the engine. Gotcha. I think I think Root's got it handled, but... You want the Pegasus to join the fray, or you want to wait in case they get to the front? Uh, wait in case they get to the front. Basically, just slow them down until Root can get to them if one of them gets a, away for some reason. Gotcha. Uh, Harpies are following. Assassin's turn. Okay. This assassin is going to do a uh, Misty Step. And he can't, or they can't. Uh, he misses steps in between you guys, and then he's going to lay in. I think you made a mistake there. He might have made a mistake. Three armor classes, eighteen. Sit twice. Four assassins done. Next oh, assassin. and I want to tell. I want to tell the guy from the past that if we're really devils that did bad things, then his life is only here because of our evil, and he should use his helmet and teleport away and take his life to right that wrong. Um, brutal. Assassin of the North. He's going to <laughs> mind static the two of you in the hallway. 26 psychic damage. 16 wisdom save for half reach. Uh, this is Ivan. Oh, okay. 26 um, psychic. 16 wisdom save. I then, might be out of the aura. Uh, let's see. Is the first one starting in my... Yeah, he is starting in your aura. So 19 radiant. 19 on the save. So we made it. So we took half. Then he hits you guys with the static. Concentration checks if you need to. And then knowing that aileron has got that spell going, he's going to step forward provoking from you ivan uh i won't take it any attacks aleron scimitar 25 aleron i will shield okay blocking that one and he misses with the last one champion here to the south is going to second wind getting back 20 hit points and then he's going to attack the guy to the west of the king his great sword hitting two times his hit points are not good than half anymore so the two hits do 26 damage then cast your turn all right as a bonus action cast is going to uh pew pew this guy whoops that was the wrong button. Uh, 26 for 15. Ignore your disadvantage. Oh, uh, I didn't even think about them having disadvantage. Uh, no, I don't think so. I okay. would not ignore uh, that first one missed. Yeah, 17. Um, we'll try the second one. That's also going to miss. Yep. Um, and then as an action. This guy here, Marithil, entered your aura, I think. Right. Uh, so this guy up here. Yeah. yeah. Between three and Aleron. So that's a big wisdom save, right? Uh, I believe so. It's a, uh, yeah, 19 wisdom save or be frightened. Wow, he made it. Yeah. Dang. He also took 16 radiant if he 
entered there, say for half. He right? started in your. So here's his wisdom. Say so that. Right. You said it was how much? So he'll take 16, eight. 8. Yeah. Eight. Got it. Okay. Back to your regular scheduled program, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> um ass is going to uh, all of my stuff is like real big area of effect right i want to cast um uh, let me i want to uh shatter is a 10 foot radius uh, 10 foot radius so let me put a little thing out there so you get either one of those two guys not hit your friends this is one of my friends right here right just to the north of you is the guy attacking but the one to the north of him is, is three. A friend. that's three yeah all right so i can't get just one of them walls um, in the way too if i uh did it there it, okay so it wouldn't get the other guy anyways i'm not going to use a shadow uh i am going to uh use my uh aberrant dragon mark and magic missile this guy all right uh so that's going to be okay. and then let me i have a little special thing with my dragon mark when i use it um i can uh, use one of my hit die and roll it yeah um it. go ahead and do it that's cool all right, so here we are. So that's a 10, and... You gain that many temporary hit points. Oh, you have it. You probably already have that there. many temporary hit points, though, don't you? No, no, I used all my temporary oh, hit points. Oh, you got used that book. Well, then you got oh, to yeah. have After Cass, Aleron. All right, the guy to my south. We're going to Toll. The dead was uh, save. 19 made it. Uh, so I make it. Darn, that was good damage. Oh, well. And he has advantage. Uh, done. Okay, after Aleron. This is the one in the room to the west of the king or Cass. He's going to start in the aura, do, I think. He's in your aura, so let's do that with some save. Good lord. 25. That. And then he's going yeah. to do mind static, getting Cass and the knight and Marithil for 25 psychic staff. Then, where my temp his mind static is, he's going to attack Cass. 15 misses, 19 misses, 20, 17 misses. Three is going to go, attacking back the one attacking him, attack greatsword. Two. Uh, one hit for 19 plus 3 is 20 and he will also and then and then root your turn you can basically move one train car without having to go to elemental form or two in elemental form easily enough okay well i think what i want to do is um turn into an elemental to head off the these guys okay. by blocking the train you can definitely get ahead of them if you want that's what i want to do yep. all right um since you only went one space you can attack while you're at it well since i'm a different elemental now um i'm gonna go and whirlwind these bozos. <laughs> <laughs> That's some dirty pool. All right. Uh, so you get four of those guys. Oh, they all have only one hit point, too. And it's a save or half, isn't it? You wipe out four of them. That could be. I forgot that they all had one hit point. Did he bonus into a different elemental to bypass the recharge? Well, I'd already turned it back into root. Yeah, he was already so, oh, Got it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that is root. But well, basically, essentially, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Cicero's turn. Cicero is going to be attacking the king. Uh, three is going to catch with one of this if Cicero ever hits the king. Um, we'll Frederick attack. Swine. <laughs> Great sword. Twenty three, king. Holy shit! Twenty four. I'm with us to start. Twenty five. Uh, not with my shield. You can cast the shield spell. Uh, yeah, I am because oh. this. Dang. This uh, lick spittle isn't going to hit his king. <laughs> Ivan, your turn. All right. Uh, to follow up the fifth level uh, inflict wounds, Ivan will simply firebolt uh, the, sorry, the guy just south of him. Got it. Do, do, do. Bolt, 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 not ball. Boom. 19 Does hit, 19 fire. Make... Got it. Okay. Assassin's turn. This assassin's got to make a saving throw over Smithville's form. Whew. Are Did you it? kidding me? <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> wow. Uh, it's going to go ahead and do mind static at you and the knight by you. 24 psychic damage to you two. It's wisdom save is a success. So he takes 12. Then three scimitar attacks on. Looks like two hit. One for 10, one for 11. Uh, I'm at a 22 with a Ooh, shield of faith up. One hit. So just the one hit. So and your turn, Marithil. Take me damage pretty quick. Uh, um, I guess the guy to the south. Uh, does a 17 hit? 18s, I think. How about a 19? Yes. Uh, I'm going to put a first level divine smite on that. Man, that's bad. Wow, that damage is terrible. Uh, 19. Okay. After Marithil. Oh, you and attack, 31 sorry. for that's yeah, 31 for 12. That's a hit for 12. Got it. RPs are staying with the other guys. Uh, assassin to the north is inside your spell, Alaron. Right. Oh, we got 18. You got him this time. Full damage. 13 radiance. Okay, then he will 
Turn on you, Alaron. Most attacked with the scimitar. Uh, well, uh, let's see. So I have I, I've gone because I did the so I will shield. Shield spell goes up. Okay. Now he's gonna need twenties. Ooh, crit for fourteen, Alaron. Then the assassin by Alaron. It's gonna take some damage from you. Alaron. Can't save. Made a save and takes half of twenty-one to ten. And he's going to provoke from you, Alaron. Uh, I already used my reaction. Mind static. You and Ivan. 13 Psychic, Ivan, 13 Psychic, Alaron, 16 Wisdom, save for half. Don't forget my sauce. Here in my sauce. Yep. And multi-attack on L. I'm not in your sauce. Some 20s. Oh, no, Ivan, you're not. You uh, could be. Close, but no me scar. Out. Missed with all three of his scimitar attacks. Champion's turn. One to the south here, trying to fight with the king. Going to attack that assassin to the west of him with his greatsword twice. Hitting them with the first one for 13 points of slashing damage. Then cast your turn. All right, I'm going to start with uh, viewing the assassin with disadvantage. Uh, 18 it. for 23. Hit for 23. Got it. And I'm going to push him back five mm. feet. Push him up. That's the wall there. And I'm going to do it again without disadvantage. 23 for 16. Killed him. On and then as my action, I am going to uh, do a uh, animate objects on this uh, douche bag right here. Okay. So okay. it's going to be a deck of cards. Mm-hmm. A lot of paper cuts uh, coming. Oh, whoops. And uh, here we go. My class is 18 is what you're looking for. Um, no advantage, right? Uh, so one. Not that I can two, think of. Three, four. Four hits. Six. I think 26. Double check. I will. Uh, you said 18 is the magic number? Yep. Yep, 26. All right. What else, Cass? Um, that is it. After Cass comes Alaron. All right. Uh, hold on. I've got, well, I've got a cantrip I haven't used. Blade Ward. Word of Radiant. Oh, nice. So both the guy, both guys next to me can take, right. can have a con save. Con saves, one, two. Uh, made it, made it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> They're doing really right. good. Their saves. Yeah. Um, I hit them with something that tax their AC, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have a whole lot that does that. You're not that kind <laughs> of cleric, especially in melee. He's a mace. That's All right, for me. All done. Root, you see swooping back into the fight, the airship, the red wyvern training its guns on you. Oh, uh, no. And it's going to go at the end of the round. Three's turn first. Three is going to be attacking Cicero. So who's attacking this king? Uh, Most attack, greatsword, greatsword. Uh, miss hit, 20 points of damage to Cicero. Then Root, your turn. Okay, Root. So the situation is you are on the last train car before the engine. You've got a Pegasus backing you up. you got four harpies overhead. You've got one, two, three, four, five raiders running along the top of the train. You got an elemental airship swooping down to attack you. Sounds like a uh, target-rich environment. <laughs> um, can I reach the airship yeah. with 90 feet of movement? Yeah, you can get to it. Well, I want to see if I can go into it. Yeah, flying. you can get into it. I'll start wreaking right, havoc on the crew. That's what I want to do, okay. yeah. Okay. The crew of the airship is similar to what you're fighting down here. There's one champion, and there are four, does it say, required crew? Crew, 20 crew. Um, okay, so there's like 20 of those guys and one commander. So you can get to the point where you can fight the commander. If you like. And then the crew right. is busy flying. So there, there's only going to be like four of them in, in the same place as the commander. So you got this situation. Fly on up into the airship, onto the bridge. What do you want to do when you get there? Well, let me see if my whirlwind recharges for nope. So I will go and try and slam the commander. Commander, okay, go for it. <clears throat> Miss. That seems like a bad. You get two. Roll. Two slams with a multi-attack. That seems right. Team both miss. Okay. After root comes Cicero. Cicero trying to kill that king. And he looks he looks uh, a little bit afraid with everything that's going on. That the tides uh, are turning against him. Um, can he make his wisdom save starting a Maora? Yeah. Ooh, that's not enough. He's going to indomitable that. He's a son of a bitch. <laughs> he still fails. <laughs> also not enough. <laughs> he still fails. He is going to use that helmet of rotation. Does that cast a spell or does he just get out? Let's see. I think he just gets out, I think. Because um, even if he casts on an, off an item, I don't think we can counter it. I'm a teleportation. Still a coward, I see. <laughs> I'm going to say that as he's good right now. Almost you spend one action to cast the teleport spell from it. Boom. Cicero goes. And scared by the angelic form of Marathil, he does believe you're some sort of demonic entities that travel through time. Uh, and brought the morning. You probably brought the morning. That's what he's going to tell. The, fuck uh, with him. Oh, and make a, everyone make a perception check in that hallway. Wisdom perception. Oh, shit. Um, oh, damn. Right, where are we? No, right. I'm on measure tool. Uh, 28. 28. Alaron. As he, uh, like, reaches for his helm, you see he's got a, like, a, uh, what's it called? The 
the, the cloth head thing that you wear under a helm. I forget what it's called. Like anyway. a little sock? Um, coif? Coif. Might, might coif. be coif. Cloth. Cloth. Yeah. Oh, that little fuck. It's blue, bitch. like the sons of the... Or like the uh, grateful little bitch. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> he was part of them. Uh, he's gone now. Cicero's gone. Uh, I'll take him out of the initiative. I have a new turn. Oh, and also, oh. with that high check, Aleron, you see the shadow of the airship. So you know there's an airship up above. You can okay. warn everyone on your level. Okay, I will. Would the Pegasus have seen Root head oh, into the, the yes. airship? And, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so I can... You want the Pegasus to... He'll go on your turn if you want to have him go after the uh, airship. Well, there's still people on the train, right? Yeah, like, there are. No. They're still coming your yeah, way. He's, he's going to... Yeah, he's going to stay... He's going to try to get those people, I guess. Or, <laughs> okay. <laughs> or I'll go help him. Shit, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, Ivan. Uh, so do we want to off Cicero? Cicero's gone. Well, he's, gone. he's gone. He's gone. Oh, he's got to teleport away. Ah. I mean, yes, we do, but... Do the same thing. Uh, firebolt onto the guy south of me. That's a hit. Wow. Three more fire. Wow. That's a low roll there. Jeez. Okay, after Ivan Carry comes on. an assassin, we got an assassin to the south of Marathil. Going to use a static on you and the uh, knight there, Marathil. 24 psychic oh. damage to the two of you. It so, just does that every round. Wisdom... Knight made it. Then he's going to scimitar Marathil three times. All three miss. Uh, well, um, I mean, they can't kill the king, right? So no, king's too much of a badass. Uh, uh yeah, uh, Marathil. Let's see, her fly speed is sixty. Uh, sixty. Yeah, she's gonna provoke from this guy. All right, with a sixty fly speed, you can get up to the bridge and do something this round. Uh, as long as you provoke from that guy, which you just did, so he swings okay. the scimitar at you. Uh, misses you. All right. You see, uh, you see where the bridge is? It's way up to the north there. See, way yeah, I want to put north, the, by yeah. the engine. Your Pegasus can meet you there too if you like. Bridge. Like up here? Is this the bridge or? It's, yeah, it's all the way up here. Oh, God. All the way up there. Yeah. All right. So there's uh, the captain on the bridge. There's the air element on the bridge. And he's got four guys with. Oh, know. oh, no. I'm going to try to take out. I'm going to try to do something about these oh, kids. Oh, gotcha. Right okay. Here. All right. Uh, so I'll fly up here. And we're gonna go one, uh, eighteen for twenty, two, thirty for twelve on these uh the the guys that are running the non harpies. <laughs> and then how high up are the harpies? Uh, Meritil's gonna fly up, get right next to one. Actually, put it put it here. Uh, fly up, get right next to one, and and and, and tell them like I don't know what you're being paid, but it's not worth your lives. Okay, you should leave now. Uh, uh, we know all about your plans. This harpy the, veers off. This harpy veers off. Uh, the other two harpies stay with the other group of. <laughs> They should have been moving by this time. Okay, so these guys are closing up, running towards the north. They'll be joining you. They'll fight you, and you'll fight them, right? Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes running up there, multi attacking times two with a longsword. Boom, boom. Oh, no. So as they enter, can they do the wind save? Oh, yeah. Uh, boom. Finally got one. Well, got another, two, yeah, both of them are. And the harpies. The harpies. <laughs> these harpies veer off from fear. These guys are frozen with fear. They still get to you and attack, but that first one missed because of the fear. Oh, they can't even close on you once they are afraid, aren't they? Right? Uh, right. Right. Yeah. Condition they can yeah, not not inside my aura. So they get to your aura and stop and freeze. The harpies the fly away the other direction. Cool. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. so there's that. Then, assassins to kill the king. Let's see, we got assassin. Are you Aleron taking your spell damage? Makes a save. Takes half of... A 13 is 6. 6, got it. Okay. Then he's got you and three and his friend, though. So he's going to Misty Step. And then when he gets to the king, he's going oh. to Summit King. 19 misses. 24 might hit. No, because I uh, am still shielded from... 25 misses one. also. Then we got another wow. assassin going. This one I'm is... I'm King Boronel, bitches! Uh, wisdom save for your spell, Alaron. Six damage. Okay. And then he's going to Mind Static you and Ivan. 21 Psychic Ivan, 21 Psychic Alaron. 16 wisdom save for half. Then he's going to attack Alaron oh. three times. 29 with the first one, Aleron. 4, 10. Then 14 yeah, misses. And then 25 at the last one. Or 11 if you don't shield. That's good. I'm still trying to catch up on the psychic here. Uh, so. So then a 29 to hit after the psychic and a 25 to hit. Yep. I will take both 10 okay. and 11. So demonstration one. checks that assassin's done. Yep. Champion's turn. The one fighting with the king. So we can step down here to attack that assassin. Great sword, great sword. Hit one time for 15 on the assassin. Then Cass, your turn. All right. Cass is going to... Oops, I'm going to send him Center myself. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so first, uh, it's a is it a bonus action to uh, have my animated objects attack a new, a new target? Is that correct? I think so, yeah. I think so, too. Okay, so animated objects... Oops, keep hitting that one. Okay. On the assassin right next to me. What, what am I looking at? Uh, you take an assassin in the north. He is armor class 18. Yes. One eight. All right. 
So I got uh, five crit, 10, 15, 23. What else, guys? And then um, as my action, I'm going to try to... I can... Can I move to here? Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to move to there, and then I'm going to cast... Um, let me see here. Cone of Cold on him, to where I, I think I could do that without getting anybody else but yeah. him, correct? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like a four-inch thick sheet of ice on the wall after you're done. Uh, roll your damage. 41 points of cold damage, 23 con save. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> 20 damage. Oh, no. It's con. Okay, so we can evade con. Um, got it. 20 damage. What else, Cass? Uh, that'll be it. Okay, after Cass, uh, Alaron. All right. I'm going to provoke from the assassin. He swings his scimitar at you. He gets a 23. All right. All right. Now I'm going to quicken a, a sixth level scorching ray. Sorcery points. So I get six rays. My class 18 is what you need. Two, yeah, miss. Eight. So it's what? Six and eight. And seven is 21. 29 points of damage. And that six had a one in it. So 30. One is it 30? Yep. 30, okay. Right. The ones, the twos. That's 30. Okay. Got it. And then, so that was a quick bonus action, and then we'll try this on him. Dead with save. With save. It. Damn. After Alaron, it's got the captain up there being attacked, but not effectively yet by the air elemental. Um, ship was going to attack the air elemental, but now the air elemental is gone. It swoops toward a bridge that's coming up that the train's about to enter and starts firing oh. on the bridge. Oh, no. And the train is beating toward it as it's hitting the supports. It's swooping by, and if it gets one more round of firing, it'll knock the bridge out. All right, so that's what it did. And then three's turn. It's going to attack that assassin of the south, great sword, great sword. Uh, 15, 15, and 10, both miss. Root, your turn. Wow, I don't think I can put a stop to this. Um, is there anyone at the controls or something that I of can... the train? Uh, yeah. Or the airship? Or not the, at the, of the airship. The airship, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the two to the left... One's Chekhov and one's Sulu. Um, <laughs> who flies the ship? It's Sulu, right? So the one uh, that you're on top of is flying the ship. Okay. Well, um, and does it like have like a single gun, a bunch of guns? Do we bunch. think we it's can attack four, the guns? It's yeah. got four ballistas. Um, Damn. Okay. Yeah. So those are manned by people as well. Four ballistas, two group or ballista. But right. yeah, if, well, you can, if you can stop the steering, that's going to make them harder and it'll, it'll definitely give you another round. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch forms. Okay into a fire elemental <laughs> and then um try and fire storm everyone okay oh yeah you just move through all squares maybe you yep. can set the ship on fire too <laughs> yeah so if you move through uh let's see here can enter stop in a hostile creature space first time you enter in a turn you deal d10 fire damage your speed is 50 so you have enough speed to get every one of them so do the damage to all of them just with your move and then your multi-attack you can then do fire attacks twice on on the main guy the helm guy always be a fire elemental all right so that's that's sad. Uh, roll four more times on your fire. So I did one to the top one. And these guys are all on fire now, right? Two to the champion, four and two. Okay, so you finished that. They're all burning now. Then you have what you, you want to do with your action. A firestorm. Oh, spell firestorm. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was 31 fire damage? Yes. And it's a deck save probably. So here's uh, in order, one, two. Uh, the helmsman did not make it. 31 fire kills him. He says, dude. This guy here, 31 fire. He lives, but he's on fire, so he's going to die soon. This guy here made a save, so he took half 31 is 15. He's on also on. And then this guy failed to save and died. So these two guys are on fire. Oh, and this guy, dominable that. He's on fire. Just survived. That, that seems like enough. That's pretty good. <laughs> I wouldn't be too ashamed. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I'm entertained. <laughs> For all in all, what Rue just did, like. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Okay. Ooh, 15 miss. That's a miss, yeah. After I have an assassin's turn, he is to the south of that champion. He's going to Misty Step, corner over there, attack Cass. One, two, a 29 Cass. 29 actually hits. It's going oh. to do to you eight points of slashing, and then Miss Miss. Then Marathil, your turn. And I'm going to have to make a constitution check here. <laughs> Turns out you made it. <laughs> 38. Uh, so do I yeah. see the ship like lifting or something? Or yeah, you see the ship is now like... not under control. <laughs> They're going to have to get okay. a new helmsman to get it back under control to fire on the bridge. I don't like their odds of that happening. You see like flames just like, it's like an inferno okay. on the deck. You yeah. can only yeah. imagine what's <laughs> going on up there. 
<laughs> oh Jesus. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna come down here uh, because they're afraid of me. My attacks have advantage, and we're just gonna go uh, one. So 28 for yeah. 14 or 29, 14, 31, 19. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, 28, 13. Yeah. Clean up that. There we go. And then I'm gonna fly up and meet up with my Pegasus. Okay. Uh, probably about I don't know halfway and be there. Okay. Uh, uh, after Marathil, harpies are all gone. Uh, I think. Oh yeah, all the troops that are on top of the. Trainer gone. Just the assassins left. Okay, we got one in your area, Aileron. Do some save. Then he's going to attack. She'll stay there and attack Cass. No mind static. This will get you, Aileron. Three and Cass. 30 points of psychic for all of you. Ooh, that's a big one. No uh, out in there to help your saves. And then he attacks uh, Cass. Oh, it's Hold on, what's the save? 16. <laughs> I just realized that I have a plus 14 to my con saves. <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> let's take 28 damage, don't roll. <laughs> Actually, 30. Let's just take 30 damage. Don't roll. Okay. Uh, oh, I also need to remember that I have uh, advantage on uh, uh, saves versus spells. Right, with the Scarabon, yeah. Okay, multi-attacking on cast with the Scimitar. Miss, miss, miss. And the Assassin's done. Next Assassin's turn. The one to the north up here by Aleron. Is your spell still going, Aleron? Okay, he makes a save. How much damage does he take? Uh, three. three. Radiant. And then he's going to mind static the two of you. 28 Psychic to Aleron and Ivan. See 16 Wisdom save for half. Then he's going to close on Aleron. No. Multi-attack when he misses. 12 misses. 28 might hit. Aleron. 28 does hit. 10 slashing. He's done. Champion's turn. Champion's coming to the aid of his king. Steps in front of that guy there to multi-attack with Grace Sword twice. Hit one time for 13. Uh, first bonus action, my animated objects. 18 is the number. So that's going to be 5, 20, or 5, uh, 13. That's it. Got it. Those things suck. Um, okay. And then for my action, I'm going to... <laughs> it's not often you hear that animated object sucks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the first time I've ever heard that <laughs> in my life. I got a hit. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to uh, disengage. And then Aleron, your turn. Uh, well, I'm not feeling so great. So everybody else seems to be doing all right. Uh, so I will a seventh level after your heal. Rounds over three's turn. Three's going to attack this guy to the south. This great sword two times. Hit him for twenty four and kill him. And then he's going to go one, two, three, four to there. Attack the other one one time, hitting him for thirty one. Damn three. Then nice job three. Root. You're my boy. <laughs> my <boy> blue. <laughs> okay, root. Damn it. What kind of hell are you going to unleash up there this round? <laughs> Yes. This game's called I Win. <laughs> oh, these guys haven't gone since you've gone, so they need to attack you, but first this guy burns up. This guy's going to take D10 damage, so give me that, please. You can just click your fire for him to give me the D10 damage. Oh, 10 fire. Not good for him. He's going to try and put his flames out. It's an action to douse. Okay, so he's, that's all he's doing this round is the fire out. It's Champions. Just gonna him again. <laughs> Champions <laughs> going to attack you. Multi attacking. Uh, he's also going to second win. Great sword. 26 for 23 points of slashing. Not magical. And then second wins for 20 back. And commands some more uh, people to take the helm, but no one takes the helm. The ship's on fire and crashing and burning root. You can probably leave it. Okay. You don't think I it's going to take the bridge out. You don't think it's going to survive. And actually, when you look down, everything's cleared. And by the time you two get back, the fighters here have wiped out the last of the assassins. You regather in this chamber here. Battle lasted uh, eight rounds by the time it's done. You look over here, the Elven King is dead. The Elven Ambassador is dead. Let's fix him, y'all. What do you want to do? Oh, yeah, I'll cast Revivify on him. Yeah. Okay, you get him back. Damn. He comes to life. <laughs> saved, his life saved by the King. He looks oh, up. <laughs> he looks up and sees the King standing over him. <clears throat> you guys might have just rectified the, the war between the two nations. <laughs> As I said I would, if you recall. <laughs> Okay, now you got. Uh, you, oh, first, do you want to do any healing before you go check out more oh, non? I'm, I'm going to go, uh, yes. like, look down at one of the bodies of the uh, Sons of Liberty and I'm going to say, good night for a party. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down that fucking uh, password and I just didn't get to use it. Never so used it. <laughs> uh, Mary, yeah, let's what's do your health looking like? Uh, uh, golly, I got to zoom in to see it. Um, I'm down like 50 ish. Okay. Um, I'll twin heal myself in Marathal. Oh my god, it's so amazing! <laughs> it's <laughs> a little extra, but there you go. Okay, uh, yeah, so I want to go talk to Soul Ring while I'm still in my angelic form. Come on down. So, Soul Ring is down here. 
And you guys kick open the door to his room. Yeah, knock, 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 motherfucker. Let him come in and open it. No, I'm just going to kick it in. Okay. Right. You Can he make the, open the, the door. safe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, with some save. He oh, made so it. Good. He looks nonplussed as mm -hmm. you open the door. He looks up at you. And uh, he says, oh, so good to see you again. The train must have been under attack, but I imagine you stopped it. I'm pleased to see you, friends. Yeah. I step up to this window. <laughs> C come on in, guys. He immediately notices the oddness of your actions. He says, what? You, <laughs> I am King Boronel. He's, you are he's... in my domain, and you are carrying a object evil with you. I have been told by trusted advisors, and you may have even had something to do with this attack. How do you answer these? I had nothing to do with the attack. I'm sure you know this, King. I do have an item I, of great evil with me. It's the uh, the spawn of genies, evil genies, that is, in this uh, this flask, this iron flask of mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is, that is grave news indeed. We shall have to take this flask, uh, take possession and quarantine this flask until we arrive at our destination. I would not do that if I were you, King. You see, this flask is the only thing that keeps the Oracle of War in our hands. Oh, well, we definitely want to keep the Oracle of War in our hands. Of course, uh, so I will do, hold on to the flask. No, do not worry. You are a, uh, you are a good and, and loyal subject. We will take the flask and lock it in our special arcane vault we have on this train. <laughs> I guess uh, if you it insist, must be protected King. at all costs. He hands yes, over the I flask do. to the king. Well, that's been taken care of. Do you mind if I talk with my friends? The king, he says to the king. Who are your friends? These. Us. We're these here. people right yeah. here. Oh yeah, yeah, you're yeah, crazy. Yeah. These are, they're, they're we go along, too. we go way back. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad to know that we're all we're all friends here. <laughs> good, good, good times. I'm gonna I'm gonna just step out, take the flask up to the special vault that I mentioned. That is definitely on this train. <laughs> the dwarf sighs after the king leaves and removes his spectacles. <laughs> he starts uh, cleaning them. And he says, "So, what is happening here?" Damn it, Meritel's just gonna tell him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell him about the Lamanian train right to the and point, yeah. all that stuff. Well, the dwarf says, yes, it's all true. God damn it. You see, when you rescued me from the Moorland, I didn't tell you the whole truth. It would have complicated matters too much. I had to return to the a room and consult with my peers to find out where we all stood. I'm sure you understand. I can't make moves like that on my own. You could be your own man. It's, you don't have to. Yeah. I so, suppose. So what did what did y'all decide since you decided <clears throat> together? Well, once I'd seen for myself what had happened to the Oracle of War, well, I even tried to help you, remember, right? Better than it can be said for the Twelve, they blew up that airship of their own to get rid of you. And now who knows what the Draconic Prophecy has in store for you. I am... Basically an army of dragons. Just, yeah. just a dragon army. Yeah, we need, to, we need to cut that off. Yeah. I'm the head of their room. I have oh. enslaved the Lamanian Triune by kidnapping Bad. their offspring. I assure you far worse things have happened in the war. It was for the greater good. That room can bring about real change in the world if we're unfettered by the rivalries between the nations of the dragon-marked houses. If we're guided by the Oracle of War and the Draconic Prophecy, we can steer Corvair toward a glorious future, a world of peace and prosperity. You want that, don't you? I don't believe that any world uh, that's built on slavery can end in peace and prosperity. The slavery of just a few for the good of thousands, maybe millions? Exactly. It would be tainted. And there would always be some other excuse about uh, what little bit of evil here, a little bit of evil there, as a select few drive the world further and further to uh, yeah, to it to their demise. I mean, <clears throat> well, the you, you has, can't start with evil and build build something good. We have no <clears throat> desire to take the Oracle of War from you. It's yours to keep. Good. We'll provide protection. I urge you, don't let them out. You won't Why? like what happens. We can offer you well, protection, investment, support. And well, the only thing I ask in return is that if there's any prophecies from the Draconic Prophecy, you share those with us. I tell you, it can bring an age of peace and prosperity like we've never seen. Uh, the, the cost, uh, to me, the cost would be too high. What say you all, he says to the rest of the party. I agree with Marathel. As do I. The dwarf sputters and spits. You already have the iron flask, so you have no other need of them. You That's in my him bag be. of holding. What was that? It's already in your bag of holding? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh... He puts up no fight if you want to take him or if you want to leave him. Maybe we can uh, trade him to the dragons to show our uh, good faith. I warn you. Would they want him? If you think that you can give the Oracle of War to the dragons not functioning, you're sadly mistaken. Well, we'll, we'll give him you with it and you can fix it for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all gained a hero point. Oh, son of a... One more hero point for oh. saving the king. Uh, 
So you want to head back to Salvation? Yeah. In time Should to be we, ready uh, for the dragons coming and to free the genies? Yeah. Uh, before yeah. we leave, uh, uh, Cass says, uh, as King Bornell still, uh, you know, my, my really good close friend Cass, brilliant artificer, really <laughs> big fan of your work. <laughs> All right, uh, you head on out. And- quick, quick question: Is yeah. there some way to like? Is there some way to prevent? I mean, I know if the if we if we let the the triune out of the Oracle of War, it won't function. But they could just be put back in. Is there some way to make it like to, like to destroy it or or make it non functioning forever? He denies there's a way, but when you guys recover the Arcane Codex, okay, uh, when the genie sent you back in time, it has a self destruct sequence in it. Oh, that the genies can show you how to use. Okay. Well, I think uh, I think the genie should uh, should judge what happens to him. That's Marathil's vote. Okay, the train continues, but your airship gets here, and you take it back to get back to town sooner. When you arrive in town, you have like about a day before the dragons arrive. So, do you want to free the genies? Yes. Yes. The Oracle of War. You guys gather together in a private room. We. I mean, I assume we get. A, we're, we're getting a long rest, correct? Uh, yeah, you will. Oh wow! All your journeys have led to this point. Um, you have the flask with you. The Oracle of War's lid opens, and the three genies billow out. Slowly, the blue-skinned woman takes the iron flask from you and reaches for the stopper. She pauses, fingers trembling. The other genies place reassuring hands on her shoulders, and with a deep breath, she opens the flask. Vines spill from within, covered in spring blossoms. They twist and coalesce into a humanoid form, a young genie child made from flowers, leaves, and roots. When he speaks, you don't have it to understand primordial to know, Where am I? he says. The genies embrace their offspring and hold him tight. Then, with a simple nod to you all, they're gone. The hiss, the last of the gases seep out of the Oracle of War, and with that, it's just a box. Can you show us how to blow it up? That's good, because we never remember to use the damn thing anyways. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Okay, so, you're all standing around there wondering how to win. Um, Sky Blue shows up. She walks in and looks at the, uh, is it destroyed now? She says. Oh, not quite. It's it's non-functioning, but it could technically be fixed, I think. There's dragons coming, I heard. I heard that the British military received a panicked sending message from a fortress at Kenroon warning that a large flight of dragons is headed in our direction. At least two dozen worms of great size and one brilliant green, enormous. Those dragons are going to be livid when they find that they've come all this way for an empty box. Well, nobody invited them. They're all about the prophecy, right? In fact, it's named after them, right? So what if we came up with our own prophecy to scare them away? And what if we made the Oracle of War speak it to them? Right, devious. I can climb inside and make it look like it's functioning, but you just got to tell me what to say to them. Um, we want to just have her say one of the pra- prophecies we've already heard? No, I think uh, no, I think we need to come up with something specifically to scare them off, but I, I, don't, I don't think it'd be right to send a, well, sorry, Sky, uh, to send a, uh, a young woman into a situation like that, like, She's got a whole life in front of her. She's been through enough. Yeah, no, I think she's got it. <laughs> yeah, I believe, if we, I believe if, in you. If we can't come up with something else, then then I say we just we just tell them it's destroyed. But I say we do that uh, when dark lanterns flicker in the light of the silver torch. The king in green rides north on a bolt of steel. Two nations prepare for war as all eyes turn to sky blue, as the prophecy. How is that going to scare them off? Like that doesn't. Oh, no, I'm not a dragon but flame winds seem to think that that was a really good prophecy. maybe they'll just be happy that they got a good one and go home and debate it I, I don't i don't we need to we need to come up with the prophecy that says something something along the lines like when the when the great flight of worms comes to retrieve the box of their prophecy it My begins wo- the undoing of all of corvair so <laughs> that day you spend thinking about what to say <laughs> The Argonth is take, takes up a position. The armies of Breland and the Five Nations take up positions. You all are ready to meet the dragons. Dragons arrive. Assuming you do all your normal spells again, right? Right. And yep. can we, in the time, can we figure out how to blow it up? Well, unfortunately, the genies told you they would tell you how when the time was right. Oh, okay. And they're gone. Clearly the time isn't right. There you go. Clearly it's not. <laughs> so... Um, is there anything else you want to do that day before the dragons arrive? You'll have a prophecy ready to give to them if you want to use that route. Soul Ring, of course, suggests you just give them the oracle, but you've freed the, de- the genies now, so that might not go over well. I like Shane's prophecy. I thought that was pretty good. My, my worry about that is that these are experts in the draconic prophecy. Um, they may spot a, a fake pretty easily. All right, well, let's move forward here while you're thinking about that, because something's going to happen before you have a chance to do that. As the sun sets in the west, over two dozen mighty dragons emerge from the clouds. 
A green dragon of immense size lands before you, clutching a spear shaped like a thunderbolt. This dragon is brilliant green and almost translucent. Not actually a green dragon, but an emerald. And it is oh. enormous. Behind it, the other dragons growl and hiss. A young red dragon slithers from the great worm's side and fixes you with its fiery gaze. Behold, Grail Caliban, king in green, has come to lay claim to the Oracle of War. Eyes turn to sky blue. Greetings. A gold Grail dragon leaps Caliban. forward and roars, Silence! How dare mere mortals speak to oh. us? Let them prove themselves worthy first. A flight of huge bronze dragons leap forward. It's like, you get the sense, it's like a uh, like trial by combat. Oh. You versus flight of bronze dragons, and you gotta prove your worth before the dragons will even talk to you. So, okay. grab you guys. Flight of bronze dragons, is that all? It's nothing. The bronze dragon's immune to fire. Immune to something. <laughs> Let's see. Who we missing? One guy missing. There's so this battle will take place on the outskirts of Salvation. Let's have it take place around before the train arrives. So you guys can take up your positions on the lightning rail platform there. Bronze dragons are coming at you. Pegasus running to hide. I it would have just been hiding before. <laughs> yep. Wow. How many bronze dragons? Five bronze <laughs> dragons. Uh, two from the north and south, and three from the front. And they're swooping in at a level where they're above ground level. So. Before they go, you won't be able to get to them from the ground, but they're within flying, you know, one move of flying. To get. Don't forget, we got a, uh, we had an extended rest over base back to yep, full. Yeah, you should all be up. Hey, you guys might want to stay close to me. Oh, okay. Why? Anti-magic shell. Anti-magic shell. Oh, okay. <laughs> While those breath weapons come in. Same Z's. <laughs> um, I can hear you. <laughs> For all initiative when you're happy where you're standing. I am going to need a hero point on my initiative. Wow. Uh, wait, let me look at the initiatives. Do I have to? Dragons have anything higher than 22. No, they do not. All right, I'm good then. I think I will, though. That's a good idea. Such a good idea. That's not what I well, want. You don't keep them. So that's not the right button. That's still not the right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it actually <laughs> says hero point. <laughs> it's down in like the features, not a... Uh... Not in the items. I'm struggling. Are you sure dragon's breath weapons are magical effects? I am almost positive that the spell specifically says it blocks dragon's breath, but I can double check. I think you're just trying to betray us by getting us all lined up for a... <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> Honest, guys. I think This will be right? best. I think for Sage Advice, it's not. And it's not listed specifically. In it. I like how Tom waited until we all rolled initiative before pointing that out. Yeah. Jerry, Jeremy Crawford, the breath weapon of a typical dragon is not. Brass these, are, these are typical. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay. Uh, boom, Alaron, you're first. <laughs> Alaron flies away from all y'all. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Later, suckers. All right, well then, let's start with the Holy Aura. Nice. Our concentration on. That's a good reason to be close together, though. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, let's, uh, back this way. Everyone is holy ord. All right. First yeah, dragonster. He will swoop in, fly past Alaron, and back toward the party, and get a lightning bolt on Alaron, and, uh, Root, and Ivan. So, 40 lightning damage, 19 dex save for half. Perfect. Now I know uh, what they breathe. Aura level. Mm -hmm. And he spent. Oh, uh, top of the day, everyone got 25 tempies. Nice. Yep. And then Root, your turn. I only know that because I immediately lost all of them. Hey, well, there's no lightning elemental. I am going to uh, do a draconic transformation. I'm going to fly away from all these uh, guys in their their formation of um, gathered breath weapons. I am going to breathe a breath weapon on the dragon to my left. 34 force. 19 made it. And I guess I still have an action, but I can't do a regular spell. So we are going to try Frostbolt. Seems to be taking a sweet time here. Frostbolt's going to be con save. We roll the con save manually while we're waiting. <clears throat> Nine, and he's only plus uh, six. We got a 20 on save. I think he made it. Oh, you might be higher than 20, it. though. My, it's 19. Okay. All right. Uh, after root comes Cass. Oh, wait. After root, you got a bite over here on Aleron. Legendary bite misses you. Okay, now Cass. All right, Cass is going to, for his action, uh, summon his two uh, ATSDs and uh, shoot them both at the uh, injured dragon. Brit for 21 plus 16. 37. Got it. 37. And the second one's only 16. Yes. 
I will standard action cast Crown of Stars and bonus action yeet it at um, Dragon World Piling On. So it does a 24 hit for 32. And Got then it. I will also disperse slightly while keeping distance with the team. This dragon here swoops into Root and Light Bolt on Root and Marathil. Uh, 72 lightning for you two. 19 deck save. Fill my aura root. Then Marathon. She's going to fly up to this one that apparently we're piling on. She's going to go to town, see what we can do. Uh, what we should have. Really, I should have been using this last time. Uh, 22. Does a 22 hit? Uh, fuck. She'll do a fourth level smite on that. Wow. That's, uh, not great. Uh, but that looks like some time. 15. Oh, 25. 34 points of damage. Ooh, 34. Got it. And then come back and try to do some more of that. Uh, 21 to hit. Yep. 18 is our uh, class. Oh, perfect. Uh, another fourth level smite. Uh, 7, 14, 18, 21, 42 points of damage. Do that bonus action. See what happens. Uh, I'm going to hero point that. Oh, not going to hit. And let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, yeah, she will be all done. Dragon will bite you back. She's going to have the Pegasus fly over 15's here. 15's a miss. And then we got Dragon coming from the south. Fly on over right behind his friend. Lightning Bolt. Uh, he'll come over here. Lightning Bolt. Uh, Cass and Root. 86 Lightning for the two of you. 19 Dex Saver. I'm going to use a uh, uh, Flash of Genius on this. It's thinking. It's thinking. No. Real Root. 16. Sorry, it's not wanting to go for some reason. There it goes. Okay, so that's 18 uh, plus my flash of genius. Made it. Half, what's half of 86? I'll just, don't worry about it. I got it. Three. Then the one to the north comes down. This guy right here. Breathes on Alaron and Cass. Hold on, I'm not done yet from the last guy. 59 damage. Right. And then the one you're all piling on. Thing is slow. It's going to multi-attack on Marathil. I was having trouble. Yep. Yeah. So multi attack and Marathil is immune to fright, so there'll be no fright. Uh, it'll bite you first, Marathil. 31 to hit for 16 piercing. Well, that'll hit, I guess. Then it'll claw you for 13. Oh, so, yeah, 29 so far. And then it'll claw you 23 for 17. 20, okay. It's all I done. assume I am not in Marathil's. Yeah, we're just outside of it. Remember, you have uh, advantage on all saves. Oh, I do? Okay, great. So that's. No. Uh, holy aura. No. Oh, holy aura advantage on all saves, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were thinking okay. Okay. Saves. Well, saves. okay, so Dragons 16, and I'm going to use a... Uh, it's over, Alaron, your point. turn. Okay, yeah, Zero remember point. you have Holy War on sa all saves. Everything has disadvantage to attack you. Does that oh. attack in the Marathal? Oh. Then Marathal, you were missed twice. No. Twice? Yeah, twice. Yeah. Only the bite hit you for 16. So 16 and 17 back, all right? All right. That's so now the freaking awesome. Now their new target is. <laughs> God, that's Oh, good, there's two of them right next to him. That should work out good. Yeah, it should work out perfectly. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Did any of those affect uh, Root? Uh, Root was just a uh, lightning death. Oh, Never okay. Attacked. That's what Root did. No, he's no. alive. Okay. Doing good. He's got 69 for... hit points left. 69 uh, out of infinity. Let's see. What? Out of infinity. <laughs> <laughs> um... Man. All right. Well, we are going to start with three of those guys uh, hitting the party. That's what we're going to do. We're going to fireball the three down there. Okay. Uh, at some healing at some point. So I'm going to save that. Screw it. We'll do it at seventh level. And just in case, I'm going to use a sorcerer point to settle this. Okay. Crappy roll. So 26, 28, 30, 34, 40, 43 points of damage. 43. They all fail their saves. They're all going to use a legendary. They'll take 20. All right. With that. And uh, yeah, it looks like that is it for me. Uh, then your turn, dragon beside you, Aleron bites you. Twenty-four to hit for twenty-five piercing. I will go ahead and blow a shield spell. Dragon beside you's turn. Uh, recharge his breath weapon. He does. I could do that lightning bolt down the line on Aleron and Cass again. Fifty-three lightning to the two of you. Nineteen dex save half. And he's done. Root your turn. I'm gonna call it that draconic weird. transformation didn't last long. But um, air elementals have resistance to lightning, so oh, no. that's what I want to be. Good answer. <laughs> so many reasons why I hate druids right now. Not really. Nobody, nobody would play a twentieth level uh, <laughs> druid, so it, it's not broken. I don't know where the token is. Here you go. Just put you. you. All right. Well, I think what I'd like to do is cast um, sunburst, Ooh. which is a sixty foot radius. And you, it looks like I could get those three that are nearest. 150 feet, 60 foot radius. Do you pick the targets? Do you have friends in that? Well, I think I can do do the circle so that uh, 
It doesn't hit Marathel. Oh, it's 150 feet away from you before you summer. So, yep. Yeah, that works. You can click the button to do the damage. Team Con save. Uh, make it. Fail it. Make it. Oh, that's Sunbeam. You already yeah, got it. you want burst. You click yeah. your, you, you do it, so you get your own damage. Okay. Uh, the middle one, who failed the save, is going to use a legendary to make a save. 39 damage halved to 19 damage to each. What else? Air elemental. That's, uh, I'm done. All right. Getting through those dragons pretty quick. At the end of the dragon's turn, um, the one that's almost dead, tax Marathon. Yes. Yeah. Oh. 30 to hit Marathon. No, 14. Disadvantage. 14. Yeah. Good so miss, lord, Jeremy. After <laughs> is Cass. Wow. Right, I'm going to move. move to there. I'm going to Eldritch Force Blast this guy. Okay. This is bonus action. Uh, that's going to miss. We'll try it again. Miss. And that's going to miss. Um, now I'm going to cast uh, Fireball. And... Yep. You can get them all? Yep. Going to get them all. Okay. All right. And... One might make it if a 23 makes your save. 23 for your deck save. Holy shit. So one failed, and either way dies. Then these two make it and take half of 35 to 17. Dragon down, four to go. In the cast this turn, we got a dragon on the air elemental. It's going to take a bite. Yes, I'm done. 26 to hit the air elemental. 15 piercing, not magical. Uh, then Ivan, you're yeah, that's a that's a 15 to hit, by the way. Oh, shit. Still hit. <laughs> <laughs> but barely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ivan, your turn. Cool. Uh, bonus action. Let's send a uh, a star down to this dragon. Uh, that will be to do a. Let's hero point that. Ooh, boom. A twenty four for thirty radiant. Thirty radiant. Got it. And then standard action. Tuck behind this corner, and I'll go. Psst, Marathel, go get him, tiger. <laughs> and I'll cast haste on her. Oh, nice. Dragon's attacking the air elemental. Oh. Different one this time oh, with a bite. Oh. Uh, 17 hits the air elemental for 18 piercing. And then after Ivan comes a dragon. Dragon to the south of the air elemental. See if it recharges life. These air elementals. It's going to hitting for 20. Hitting for 11. Claw. Hitting for 16. It's 23 if you're counting. Okay. That dragon's you're done. Sure, Marathil, your turn. Goody. Uh, let's see. Two, go five, ten. Here. They look equally messed up. Oh, wait. Hold on. It's uh, disheartening when two huge dragons can barely whittle away the elemental who can just restart his, restart his hit points right <laughs> at any yeah, time. Let's see. I bet the blind size was not going to matter. Uh, so let's just see if we can hit him. See if we get lucky rolls. Yeah, 27. Oh, uh, third level smite on this. Uh, 15, 18, 26, 36 points of damage. Come back around. 22, 15. We'll do another third level here. Uh, yeah, 14, 10, 24, 34, 39. And try again with the uh try again with the hasted action 21 yeah. uh this time we'll do a second level oops that's not the right button how about that second level uh for 12 24 damage well shit uh i guess we'll try with the bonus action uh tr -tr 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 -tr. we'll hero point that 19, 19. Yeah. thanks enough 24 we'll put a second level on that too just to see what we can do yeah Finish the dragon. Nice job. Get you on the dragon. After marathon. Don't worry, guys. I'll hold off these two up here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just trying to figure out here within 30 of go there. Then we line everything up. I'll at least go there. All right. Start to the crate. Dragon comes here. Did you take here. your haste action? I you did. I did. Alaran, multi yeah, I wouldn't have killed it without the haste action. Yeah. Right on Alaran's uh, 22 to hit Alaran. I'm, sh I'm shielded, so no. And then Claw. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Two huge dragons being seen yeah. held off by a cleric. That's my cleric. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Let's let, let's go ahead and just put them all there. Uh, <laughs> uh, this sucks. All right. all right, we will go ahead and uh, bonus action shield of faith. No, no, I take that back. I do not shield of faith. That is a concentration spell. I will instead. Aha! Instead, I will use two sorcery points to quicken a mirror image. Oh. That's a defensive spell that does not require. Go. <laughs> and then I'm going to do this to the two adjacent ones. Oh, it's 19 cotton seconds. All right. After Aleron, we got Dragon Bite on you, Aleron. 27. Uh, mirror image. <laughs> you can click the button. We'll see who it gets here. Gets an image. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> after Aleron is the dragon's <laughs> turn. 
recharging his breath weapon. Does not multi attack an aileron. Misses. Claw misses, misses. with 18 and 25. Uh, do I have to declare shield before I do the mirror image? Hmm. I think you do because your image doesn't go if it misses you. Completely. I thought it doesn't it determine if it hits an image first and then I could be wrong. I've seen it either way. Uh, Tell you what, you right. choose, Jeremy. <laughs> all right, I'll see if it hits my mirror for okay. my image first. Uh, so it's gonna hit me, so I will shield after the drag. It comes root. Hey, root is gonna oops. Wrong thing. Root's going to back up one. I don't know if it's in its reach or still or not. You're good still. And then I'm going to attempt to polymorph one of those dragons on Alaron <laughs> into a tortoise. <laughs> are they, how high in the air are they? Uh, it'd be a, the tortoise would not take enough damage to change back to a dragon. Okay. Thank you for that ruling. I always say that about polymorph. It's like imagine? you instantly undo it. Okay. So, so AC 19, 19 wisdom cons, save. Charisma, wisdom, mm, made something. It 23. Okay. After root comes Cass. Oh, wait. After root comes a bite on Alaron. 17's a miss. Cass, your turn. Uh, I'm going to force blast this one first with a uh, bonus action. One by the RLML? Yes. Okay. That's a hit for 10. Push him five feet just to okay. be a dick. The next one's a miss. And then I'm going to uh, fireball the two up next to Alaron. Okay. It's going to be a oops, uh, 37. 37 both uh, save. 37 fire damage. 37 fire, so oh. 6, 18. Got a bite on the air elemental. That's a 15 for 13 on the air elemental. Not magical. And then uh, Ivan, your turn. Um, let's help out root elemental. Uh, another crown going towards him. Hey, ooh, uh, let's hear a point first. Never mind. Uh, that's going to miss. Um, and then let's hit it with a firebolt. So a, a, a 21 hit. After and Ivan, then skirt. dragon's turn. This one is the one on root. See if it recharges the breath weapon. It does not. Closes on the elemental. Next for the bite. 19 for 15. Claw. 30 for 22 for 15. Claw. 19 for 14. Well, I think he's doing okay. Uh, I guess we're going to come up here. 30 to there. Uh, well, might as well, right? Uh, uh we're going to do a second level smite on that. Uh, 12, 33. Got it. Got one more hero point. Yeah, might as well use it, right? There it is. There it is. So we'll put another second level. 11, 36. And then the uh, haste action here. Uh, ooh, 1930. That's good damage. Uh, I'm just going to let it roll with 30. 30? Got it. Let's see, one more. All right, yeah, I'll just try to hit it and then see. That's going to miss, unfortunately, and I am going to provoke as I move away. It tried to bite. 20, no, 14 misses, and then recharge its breath weapon and attack Alaron. Uh, oh, damn. That'll hit. You have any images left? I do. I have two images left, so it'll miss. All right. One image left. Claw, 18's a miss. Claw, 20's a miss, right? With the end of that turn, King in green comes to the front, lands on the platform here, shaking the platform, and he says, impressive. Uh, let's see, so that's this. End of that round. Oh, he wins initiative. You're not a Jedi yet. <laughs> you don't think he's attacking you? If he were, you'd go first, Alaron. Do you want to uh, keep the fight going or not? Uh... I am you, going do you, to. Do you see the length of that health bar? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's because it's the size of the token. Um, <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I'm going to bonus action Misty Step. Okay. Five, six. And then uh, let's see. Anyone really messed up? Earth, the air elemental. That's all right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I will do that and take the dodge action. Okay. Assuming no one attacks. The king in green, a green emerald great worm. Lands on the platform. The other dragons all withdraw in deference to him. He says, impressive. For months, my subjects have watched your journey. Gory Fail, who you know as Narcy of Xandrar, brought word of the Oracle to me. She told me it can reveal unheard verses from the Draconic Prophecy. This is no toy for humans to play with. Prophecy is the future of our world, and its words are sacrosanct. He slams his spear under the ground with a snarl. I gave no order for Gory Vale to seize the Oracle. She was unwise to attempt it, but her defeat can't go unpunished. Our guardians, the eyes of Cronipsis have decreed that the Oracle of War must be given as tribute. You have one hour to decide. Surrender it or die defending it. 
Well, it's uh. You know, uh, Cass, it's non-functioning right now. Yeah. You want to surrender it to him and non-functioning? He didn't ask for a no. functioning Oracle of War. I didn't ask we, you. We know. Asked. We know. <laughs> what do you want to do? It, okay. it, it's given a. It's given us a prophecy. Uh, that that we think uh, you would like to know before taking it into your custody. I'll return in one hour, he says. We'll he have leaves. it ready with the prophecy. He leaves you guys. Bitch. A blast of cool air washes over you, rich with the aroma of the deep forest. Oh. The fiery genie from the Lamanian Triune appears before you. He says, and he looks at Cass when he says this, you made a promise to us. Filling it now may be aid you in your hour of need you betcha what do you need me to do only a mortal humanoid can input the self-destruct sequence into the oracle which takes one minute to work writing special codes onto the oracle's parchments then feeding them into the artifacts ports if the codes are inputted correctly two palm-sized dials emerge from the device the operator must place their hands on the dials and turn them both clockwise this opens a planar rift destroying the Oracle of War, and hurling the Operator and any living creatures nearby to random locations across the cosmos. If the dragons discover the Oracle is destroyed, they are likely to seek retribution. But if the device is activated in their presence, the Rift could deal with them too, and serve yeah, as a we'll warning see. to any others from Argonessen who dare to enter Corvair. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to... Okay, fine. Okay, so potential it. endings. You got, oh, you got uh, Sky on your side. Who could, you could try to trick him if you wanted to. Mm-mm. In which case, you wouldn't have to hand over anything. You could lure them in and destroy the article while they're there, mm-hmm. or you could battle them. Let's just let's destroy it while they're there. I really don't want to send Sky Blue in. Meritho would rather risk herself. Okay. I mean, Cass you're welcome really, to go, Cass. Well, Cass, no, Cass uh, made the promise, uh, so yeah. he, he's going to be by your side when you do it. But if you want to be the one who, boop, 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 I'm good with that. Any other uh, plans or objections? If not, we'll fast forward to when the dragons return. You have the oracle ready when the dragons return. The king in green lands next to it with the other dragons nearby. All your army is well withdrawn. Uh, so who's turning the dials clockwise? Why don't you, on, honestly, uh, why don't you turn the dials? So, because that, I mean, is that going to take a check or? It may. Or it just happens. Yeah, why don't you do it, Cass? Okay, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. The rest of you know it's coming, so you can quickly withdraw. The dragons are all moving forward, anxious and curious about yeah. the item. When you snap the dials the clockwise, the Oracle of War shudders to life. Gray smoke pours from every crack in its surface, and the whole thing starts to tremble and shake. Then, with a tremendous roar, it tears apart in a multicolored explosion. For a moment, Cass, you see everything. Then you are gone. And the dragons are sucked into the void as well. All of them, except... Um, the king in green who escapes with his life and returns back to the chamber. But it won't be coming this way again soon, as far as you know. So, Cass, you are thrown somewhere in the multiverse. You'll have to use all your artifacts to get back to where you were. Do you have any idea how you'll get back home? Uh, your time-traveling invention you wished for or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's exactly that what, you're what it was. Yeah. It's, yep. Okay. The heroes of the Moorland War are invited to Rote to receive personal honors from King Boronel. Um, you receive news from Aaron de Caneth before arriving at the ball. His work at the LifeSpark Foundry has struck. Using the Creation Forge, he's begun crafting in an extra-dimensional realm, a world of metals and gears safe from harm. Bright sunshine falls over the city of Rote. After passing through crowds of jubilant celebrants, you cross the Howling River and enter Broken Blades Castle, seat of Grealish royalty. A grand ball is held in your honor. Dancers whirl across a polished golden floor, the stirring music of an orchestra. As you soak in the scene, the dancers beckon for you to join them. You are all awarded full military honors and offered a command position in the national armies of your choice. You all have homes as you choose. Friends is the end of the Oracle of War. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 20, 20 levels. 20 levels. Well done. That so was awesome. You can, uh, three like, in three months. You can definitely write up <laughs> like uh, what your character does. And I'll share that if you do. And there's no, there's an AR for the last one, but there's nothing specifically yeah. on the AR except for you get to retire. Right, cool. That was you cool that you called. Out that, uh... that was cool. I had an idea for what to do with Flame Wind in addition uh, to what she did anyway, giving you the hints. It's like if you'd gone to fight a dragon and you'd lost your Pegasus. Oh. I was going to have Flame Wind swoop in below your peg- oh. below you as you fell <laughs> and serve as the mount cool. after that. Yeah. That's awesome. No, like after I was bound or it's like, oh shit, that's, yeah, it's like, okay. Yeah. So what did everyone else wish for? Um, Root wished for, want to tell him Root? Uh, I gotta, I, starting to return to... Uh, I got to drop uh, off, guys. Thanks, man. Right. See you, Jeremy. Well, thanks, thanks. Jeremy. Yeah. See you, man. Take care. All right, bye. Sorry, what was that, David?
Uh, nature's starting to return to the Mornland. Mm. Mm. Nice. That's cool. Wow, that's a big that's cool. One. Yeah. And Ivan never heard what Ivan wished for. Kind of stupid. Uh, he wished for his uh, degree after getting kicked out of school. Feels <laughs> 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 like the <laughs> personal experience <laughs> is much better than reading a book. That's oh. funny. That's awesome. I love that. Oh man. And he got to experience death firsthand. So. Yeah. So apparently the uh, artifact that Kaz invented was uh, some type of uh, plane uh, traveling plane shift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> plane shifting. <laughs> they get home from another plane. And now Kaz can be played in AL Forgotten Realms games. That's a rule I just made up. <laughs> That's a rule you just made up. That's what your wish <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, cool. Thanks, guys. Oh, thanks for running, thanks, Tom. Tom. That was good. Yeah, that was awesome. yeah, this was a lot of fun.